Welcome everybody to the Gym Masters Show Live. How are you and you and you all around the world? Hope you guys are doing well and I hope you're in store. Well, what you do have in store and I hope you're ready for a fantastic show. We've got an amazing show in store for you. This is uh, the Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series popular daily show that we do 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We've done it for now 14 weeks and I believe over 100 shows now. We're going to note that this weekend. And thanks to all of you who have been following along, who have been watching, who have been celebrating with us. Uh, this is an amazing uh, undertaking, a very big undertaking that we embarked on um, back in like May, 14 weeks ago, seven nights a week. So if you multiply that, that's a lot of shows. <laughs> Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Uh, we have extraordinary guests from all fields of endeavor, wealths of success, television, music, film, theater, Hollywood, Broadway, uh, science, nature, health and wellness, food, inspiration, uh, you name it, they're all here. But also, this is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series where we've done comedy, we've done trivia, we've done nostalgia, we've taken you on location to the Netherlands and to uh, Red Rocks in Denver, we've taken you to California to the Brady Bunch House and to Malibu. Uh, we've also taken you to the New England coast as well and so much more. Again, this is uh, an entertainment lifestyle talk show that is fashioned after the talk shows that have something for everybody. It isn't just one particular topic. It isn't one particular style. It's something for everybody. So continue to share the links, have those watch parties that you have on Facebook. Um, you can find all of the episodes that we have, our extraordinary conversations with amazing guests on location segments and so much more on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. That's right, on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. That's where we archive every single episode of this entertainment lifestyle talk show series. So for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, I've been doing this kind of work for a long time. I'm a professional television and radio personality, multimedia personality, worked in TV and radio for a number of years, as well as uh, in addition to being a host and personality and presenter, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, narrator, voiceover artist, and uh, so much more. And uh, thoroughly love it. I've been in it for a long time. And uh, we created this out of that background 14 weeks ago. And again, uh, you total up seven nights a week. <laughs> it's a big undertaking and it's uh, it's been fantastic. And I've enjoyed uh, interacting not only with our guests, but with, with the myriad of incredible viewers we have from across the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, Asia, Africa. It's, it just blows my mind every time I see new people popping on. And you guys have been really, really terrific at spreading the word and telling people about this unique experience of this show. We built the home studio, got everything together, been tweaking. We did a major studio upgrade a couple of weeks ago and continue fine tuning and tweaking. And it really is a lot of fun. And uh, again, sporting one of these jackets. I know you guys like when I sport these jackets. Um, these jackets, when I bring these out, um, I also do work with MGM as a host and a master of ceremonies among the many different things that I do. And uh, these jackets actually I've worn uh, on stage for entertainment concerts and special events and contests and so much more for MGM Resorts International. So I figured tonight, went through the uh, walk-in closet, said, you know what, it's a Friday night and we've got a wonderful artistic director and brilliant actress on our show. So we're gonna go uh, in style with the sparkly jacket and the hat tonight for you guys. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, of course, you know, uh, we have a little ritual here. We go big time. We are a class operation of the Gym Master Show Live. So we toast everybody. We toast you and you and you and you and you from all around the world, wherever you're watching. It's an honor and a blessing to have you watching us. There's a million other things you could be doing, but the fact that you are here watching us live on the air, or perhaps you're gonna watch this in the archives at Gym Masters TV, I think it's terrific. So we greet you, we honor you, and we welcome you. And so does our friend George Burns. He's got his cigar. <laughs> he is there. He greets all of you. He sees everybody around the world. 
for those of you watching for the first time, uh, this was my Aunt Lillian's. I uh, got passed down to my cousin Barbara. She then gave it to me. And I said, you know what? One of these nights I'm going to put them on the show and see what happens. So back in the early days of this series, I put them on a nostalgic night and everybody fell in love with good old George. So uh, I tell you, it's amazing the amount of people, guests and viewers who look for George Burns. So he is here. And Seven Angels Theater, who uh, are very special guests, uh, Samina De Laurentiis is the artist direct, artistic director for they did a tribute to George and Gracie. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit too, which is kind of cool. So it's apropos, we have George Burns in the house with us tonight, right? And Jeannie is here, Jeannie is here and she says, hello, she's in the bottle. I don't know if you can see her blinking in the official I Dream of Jeannie hand-painted bottle. This thing weighs a ton. I think I mentioned this before, but a little inner secret, uh, the actual bottle, which is this exact design and shape, they used, the TV series used a Jim Beam liquor bottle as the prototype for the design of the I Dream of Genie bottle. So when you see the I Dream of Genie bottle on television, or you see this one here, um, it actually is fashioned after, now this one is real, this one's heavy, it's the real deal. But the other one was fashioned after um, an actual liquor bottle. Jim Beam bottle had that design. So in the 60s, when they created the series, they use that as a prototype. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, your friend Silver is here. We got him on a TV shoot in Europe uh, from Switzerland. He says hello. He greets everybody. He's sort of our mascot. Again, this show is all about light, levity, and love, or as we call it, uh, the word we accidentally coined, lovity. So we say hello to all of our loveties watching right now. And uh, he greets you as well. He sort of keeps things under control here, makes sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing at the Gym Master Show Live. One more friend here that is a part of our show, and it's really exciting. After I show you this, if you didn't hear who is also going to be joining this cast of characters here, tell you who that is in a minute. There's your friend Jimmy. There he is. He says hello. He greets all of you. Now, if you're afraid of clowns, you don't have to worry about Jimmy. Jimmy is a friendly clown. Look at his blue feet. He was a childhood toy, actually, when I was really, when I was a wee tot, a wee lad. And um, he was a family gift from my parents. And there he is. And uh, he greets everybody. He says hello to everybody as well. Again, we put smiles on your faces. Why not, right? The alternative is not so hot. <laughs> The uh, other cast of character that is en route to us right now via the mail is Gilligan from Gilligan's Island uh, by way of uh, wonderful friend Dream of Denver. We had her on over the weekend, wife of Bob Denver and a wonderful actress and producer, radio station owner. And she saw these cast of characters and she says, Jim, 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 you need a Gilligan on set with you as well. So we have an official Gilligan doll coming uh, from Bob Denver's fabulous wife, Dreama. And that's going to be terrific. I can't, you know, the fact that it's coming from her direct is going to be really, really special. So soon, maybe next week, Gilligan will be joining the crew here, which I think is very, very cool. So how is everybody? We like to greet our audience. We like to welcome everybody. It's at the time of this broadcast. It is the end of the week. So we hope everybody is doing well. Our very special guest is award-winning actress and artistic director of the Seven Angels Theater, which happens to be in Waterbury, Connecticut, a legendary place, Samina De Laurentiis. And right now, like all of our guests, uh, she is in our illustrious and beautifully appointed green room. She's enjoying the finest champagne and lobster, uh, the finest chocolates and cheeses uh, from around the world right now. That's what she's doing while we greet our viewers. <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But let's welcome our audience of folks that are coming in. Everybody likes to say hello. All the loveties like to say hello. They like to cheers. And watching on YouTube. Hello. Glad you're back. I'm glad you're back, Willie. Watching in the Netherlands. Watching there in Holland live at 12 minutes after 1 a.m. Did you take a nap today? Remember, you're supposed to take a nap because it's 1 a.m. I know you usually take a nap so you don't miss our show. So did you take the nap or did you stay up all day like sometimes you do, Willie? And uh, it's funny when you say you're going to sleep now and then we still see you an hour later. <laughs> you're a very devoted fan and you're our viewer of the week. You still are our viewer of the week. There's your Dutch tulips just for you, Willie. Really nice, huh? 
We got these while we were on a TV shoot in Amsterdam last year. And um, you are the viewer of the week. And what that is, folks, watching, we select a viewer who has been very loyal to the show and watches all the time. Uh, Willie has watched over 60 straight shows and hasn't missed one. And it's like 1 a.m. in Europe where she is in the Netherlands and still goes out of her way to watch the shows. Now, she could watch these in the archives at Gym Masters TV on YouTube, right? No, she wants to be in on the action of the live. And with so being somebody like myself who loves live television, live radio, things that are live, stage, uh, there's something exciting about live. Willie wants to be a part of it. Good to see you. Ken is here. Ken Deneen. Hello, Jim and Samina. Welcome, Ken. You're watching on the YouTube channel for Gym Masters TV. If you get a chance, subscribe to the channel. We hope everybody subscribes to the channel as we're building that channel. And we have a lot of content on there, 14 weeks of episodes of our series. Plus, we have the inspirational master's mantras that I do, some other uh, broadcast work that I've done, and we're packing that channel with a lot of great content. And uh, we've done some YouTube exclusive pop-up shows as well, where I've just popped up and did a mini unannounced show. We might be doing one of those on YouTube this weekend. So stay tuned on YouTube for that at Gym Masters TV. Good to see you, Ken, and welcome. There's the tulips from Willie in Holland. Christine is here watching on the YouTube channel. Hello, Jim and all from Gym Masters Show Live on YouTube. Good to see you as well. And sometimes you tag team, sometimes you do the you do both. You do the double coverage. You do Facebook and YouTube. Christopher, how are you today in Sylvania, Ohio? Hola. Good to see you. You changed it. It's usually hello, Jimbo. Now it's hola. We're going a little Latin tonight. <laughs> Ralph Lampkin Jr. is here from Indiana, South Bend. Good evening to you, Ralph. Hope you're doing well. Ooh, your jacket. I know very sparkly, right? Sort of very... Um, uh, Vegas uh, in style, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. This, this is one of my MGM jackets. Um, not on loan from MGM. It's, it's my jacket, groovy shirt and disco jacket. Thank you very much. We wanted to, uh, liven things up as we get ready for our weekend. Thanks, Christopher. And, uh, good evening, Mr. Loverty. Good evening, everybody. Linda O'Dell watching in Florida, the sunshine state. Good to see you as well. Rini Katz is here in the Midlands of Flushing, Queens, New York. Hope you're doing well. Say hi to your mom, who's still probably um, finishing off the birthday cake from weeks ago. Good evening. Good to see you, Rini. Rini is a wonderful cabaret star. Uh, if you want to see the very moving and touching and inspirational interview that she and I did, uh, just go to our YouTube channel and scroll down. There's a lot of great interviews and, and episodes of our series on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Good evening, Kathleen from Queens. Hi, Jim. Hope you're doing great. Our queen of Queens. Hi, all. It's nice to see you and love to your mother as well. I hope you're doing well on this uh, this evening, my friend. And I always mention it, but Kathleen and I were on the Rachel Ray show together, which was really cool. And I hope we get a chance to do that again once studios are open. And uh, I don't know if you had heard that Rachel Ray's house uh, went on fire this week. Uh, I think a lot was salvaged. The kitchen where she does her show was salvaged. A lot of roof, second floor damage, but her house uh, did uh, go on fire. Uh, so we send her and her husband and then the dogs and you know our love and blessings to Rachel Ray. And uh, Linda's saying, hey to Willie in um, the Netherlands. Again, we have an international audience. Our friends at the Seven Angels Theater is here. Hello, Jim. Hello to you, to, to Paul and everybody that's there. Thanks for all of your uh, support and love and uh, sending out all the promotional announcements and uh, letting everybody know that we are here live uh, with the wonderful Samina, who's joining us in just a second. If you've never been to the Seven, Seven Angels Theater, Seven Angels, there's a lot of great theaters, you know, across the country. Seven Angels Theater is is a favorite of mine. Also, the Palace Theater, Sherry Marcucci, who's a dear friend as well. Uh, these are gems of places that exist, uh, you know, in our country. These happen to be in Connecticut. Uh, if you're ever passing through, they have great, great shows. Uh, and, and just once things get back open. 
get out there and support though you can support you know these there's actors funds there's a lot of different things you can do to support the arts now while things are not necessarily open uh, a lot of people are starting to do things virtually but uh, it's good to see them there at the seven angels theater uh, i was there and met lou diamond phillips when i was there i'll show you that picture thank you very much you love the jacket and Danilo is here uh, from San Diego. Hello, all Lovities. Welcome to all Lovity Hall. Hi there, Mr. Lovity. It is good to see you in San Diego. I bet it's probably, what, 78 degrees, no humidity there with a light breeze off the coast in San Diego. Love San Diego. Sweet jacket. Love your hat, Mr. Lovity. Thank you very much, Linda in Florida. Congrats, 14 weeks 100th show. I know. Is that not unbelievable? I think Willie said it was Wednesday. I'm not sure. I got to count it up. I got to count it all up and see. Avril Britton is watching in Hampshire in the United Kingdom there in England. Good to see you as well, Avril. You're always here. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. It's good to see you. I know you love the jacket too. That's fantastic. Wow. What a good looking outfit. You look great. Thank you very much. Wow. Gee. I'm going to have to, can I print these out and uh, put them on my walls? <laughs> uh, party, that's right. Uh -huh. And of course, you love Jeannie and George and Silver and Jimmy, the cast characters. Pretty soon, Gilligan will be joining us as well. Christine Fairwood, watching in Connecticut. Good to see you, Christine. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, Thomas Dacey, also in uh, Connecticut, is here watching. Good to see you, Tom. Hope you're doing well through all of this craziness that we're experiencing. Steve Simmons is watching from beautiful Maine. I love Casco Bay there in Portland. We did a TV shoot in Portland, Maine, a couple of them. And uh, we did one over towards Kittery, another one in Kenny Bunkport, another one in Portland. And then I was uh, with a public television special I was involved in with uh, composer Tim Janis. We filmed that uh, at the York Auditorium in York, Maine, which is a Beautiful area as well. So good to see you. Uh, what part of Maine are you watching from, Stephen? Uh, on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. Uh, Maine is a wonderful place. All of New England is. Been away a while. Husband is here tonight. Joan Hackett. Wadomski, good to see you. Welcome. We're so good to have you. Brattleboro, Vermont. I noticed you have Brattleboro, Vermont in your picture there. It's good to see you as well. Welcome. And we've got folks from all over over all over mary jones is here that's right connecticut girl who uh is in florida as well enjoying her life and her family and it's good to see you mary fellow broadcaster many years as well and also uh, on air in florida good to see you mary welcome a lot of people are saying quarantini yeah that's a phrase i think that's a word i think quarantini was created a while ago but on this show lovity was created um, all these words that are popping out of this experience that we've been having in 2020, the Lovity Show, absolutely. Good stuff here. Cheers to you. Cheers to all the Lovities and uh, Lovities and cheers to Samina. A few more here and then we'll get ready to uh, welcome our guest. It's amazing to see how many people are uh, joining us as well. Marsha Lyon. So sit right back and you'll hear a tale. Hello from Massachusetts. Good to see you, Marsha. Marsha and I have known each other for years. Marsha used to come into uh, public television studios and she was one of those volunteers that would answer the phones and take PBS pledges. Uh, she did that for many, many years and then went to other meet and greet functions as well. Marsha, if you're watching, I wanna let you know, three of your fave, we had Damian McGinty from Celtic Thunder on the show. You can go back in the archives, you can see that episode. Chloe Agnew from Celtic Woman has been on the show. And coming up on August 23rd, Ryan Kelly from Celtic Thunders here exclusively. And then the following Sunday, I think it's the 30th of August, Neil Byrne from Celtic Thunder is going to be here. And then the early part of September, Paul Byram is going to be here as well, who was with Celtic Thunder. I know you love all of that, Marcia. So we'll be posting the promotions, you know, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at Gym Masters TV. Yes, and Thomas is in Wallingford, Connecticut. The last time I saw you, I was on a TV shoot at the American Steam Cheeseburger Restaurant for the Lifestyle Travel Series I host, right? I think we were there, and we were in Wallingford, Connecticut. That's when I saw you last time. Jennifer Barry is here, and she's going to be zen. 
Jen is usually zen, she says, when she watches this show. Thank you very much. You love the jacket, loving the green. I know, wait, since I have Irish in me, wait till you uh, see what I do next year for St. Patrick's Day. 65 shows you've watched nonstop and at what is 1 a.m. where you are there in Holland. That is true dedication. Thank you, Willie. It's 1969 Woodstock's 51 anniversary this weekend. Let's celebrate love and peace. Schlancha, terrific, which is the Irish or Gaelic uh, toast. Mary says, hi, mom. Oh, so that's fantastic. So that would be Joan. Hi, Mary. Glad you're here. Meet Jim. So Joan is the mom of Mary. <laughs> hi, Mary. And hi, Mary's mom, Joan. It's one big family here on the show. You're now a lovety, just so you know. Once you watch the show once, this audience, they adopt you into the world of uh, loveties. So you're a lovety. Hi, Jim and Samina. Enjoy both of you. D, welcome. Good to see you on YouTube. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We would love that. Everybody watching who uh, has access to YouTube, we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. Seven Angels, a magical place. Yes, it is. And the name is perfectly uh, apropos as well. Uh, Rini says, thank you, Jim. My mom remembers and many of my colleagues and friends were moved oh, by the interview. And when I think we sang your mom happy birthday, right? Yeah, I have, I've I've been singing people happy birthday. I should go on Cameo. Everybody says, Jim, you belong on Cameo. I should go on there. But I've been singing happy birthday for everybody. I know everybody wants me to pick on that guitar back there too. Somebody said, is that yours? And I said, yeah, we've had that for years. Hello from Southern California, Anne. It's a pleasure to see you as well. You've been here, uh, you know, night after night. We love it. And I need a talking, <laughs> talking Tina doll. Is that the one from uh, the Twilight Zone where uh, Talkie Tina didn't like the stepdad and the stepdad was played by Telly Savalas? My name is Tina and I don't like you. And he trips on her and falls down the stairs. And that was the Twilight Zone episode. Uh, Talking Tina. I used to have the Lost in Space rob robot from the series. And my sister had the Mrs. Beasley doll from Family Affair. And if you remember, a few weeks back, we had Kathy Garver on the show as our guest who was Sissy on Family Affair. Want to see that episode? You can. Scott Schwartz was on a couple of nights ago. He was in A Christmas Story and um, The Toy with Jackie Gleason and um, Richard Pryor. We had Rain Pryor on the show as well, Richard Pryor's daughter. Fabulous friend, brilliant actress and comedian and performer and screenwriter and screenplay writer and so much more. She's working on a series with Norman Lear. She was on as well. You can go back and see all these great interviews. 105 degrees in California. Wow. Wow. That is hot. This is my first show here. We'll have to catch up. Yes, you can binge watch the Gym Master Show live. I think you'll enjoy it. Pamela Perkle, glad you made it from Kansas City. We love it. You've been to the palace uh, in Waterbury. That's fantastic. That's another great Connecticut legendary theater as well. Yeah, they have a lot of beautiful places. Gardner, Maine, Steve. Good to see you in Gardner. And Michael Simmons. Hello there. We love you, Samina. Some Samina love coming her way, of course. Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas. Hi, Jim and everybody. Good to see you, Marilyn. Crystal Ray, Crystal Michael Ray in British Columbia, Canada. Good that you're joining us once again as well. We love that. How did you clean the word love it? He was on in the interview and Hampton Callaway. She's amazing coming up on the spot pearls. I love that. I know what you mean. The fact that I said love it and she loved that word and she was on the piano. This is the brilliant Anne Hampton Callaway. And she started singing love it. Uh, when you're on the Jim Master Show, you end up with a master's degree. I mean, it was really cool. She was fantastic. So uh, good memory uh, up there in British uh, Columbia, Canada. Jason, hi, everyone. Great to be here watching from Connecticut. And a couple more, and we're going to get ready to welcome our very special guest. You've had uh, amazing guests. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And more to come, more to come. Yeah, the jacket, Jim Color, sparkly, very nice. Great show with Scott Schwartz. Yes, from A Christmas Story. 
Uh, that was a long one. That was like six hours. Just want to show you before we get going here, uh, some of the guests that are coming up in the next couple of days. Tomorrow, we have music legends, Randy and Ann Dorman. They're there in Tennessee. They have worked with Kenny Rogers and some of the greats. They've done artist development, branding, marketing, photography, recording studios, and uh, performing as well. And Anna's a brilliant performer, singer, and uh, so much more. They are on tomorrow night. Then Cuneo is here Sunday. Cuneo, you may remember him as Michael Cuneo. Uh, he was with Under the Street Lamp for years, which was uh, always on public television and still on public television. I interviewed him multiple times in the PBS studios. He broke out, solo career. He's doing extraordinarily well. He's an incredible singer, actor, dancer. He's going to be here this Sunday. Then on Monday, the award-winning legendary film director, actor, producer, uh, screenplay, writer, Lloyd Kaufman is going to be here on Monday. That's going to be an amazing show. And on Tuesday this week, American, America's Got Talent, America's Got Talent um, winner, sixth season winner, America's Got Talent sixth season winner. This is Lando Eugene Murphy Jr. He won the sixth season. It was actually a very moving a moving, moving episode and uh, season. He was in West Virginia working in a car wash and uh, he won a million dollars and his voice, he's a jazz singer and his voice is, uh, is incredible. He's gonna perform for us on Tuesday as well. He's coming up this Tuesday, winner of the sixth season of America's Got Talent at NBC, Lando Eugene Murphy Jr. And then on Wednesday, we have Looks like I got two heads, doesn't it? That's interesting how that one comes up. You know why that's kind of cool? Because he's a professional magician. I don't know how he did that. Uh, this is uh, David Malik. He is a, a professional magician and uh, an entertainer. And he's very big uh, you know, across the country and also in Vegas. He's going to be our guest on Wednesday of next week. That is cool, huh? Oh, can I disappear? And now I become David. David is with us Wednesday. Again, it's going to be a night of magic and entertainment next Wednesday. Again, that is live, of course. So if you're watching this show archived, just scroll down Jim Masters TV on YouTube and uh, you'll find all the episodes with these once these happen. All right. So there's your rundown of the guests that are coming on. Good to see everybody. Nice folks from around the world. We love it. Yeah, you guys liked Darius. Uh, De Haas, the fabulous singer and actor who was on uh, with us last night. And originally from Connecticut, Samita was amazing in Next to Normal at Seven Angels. Wonderful. Yes. If you have any uh, Samina stories, if you've seen her in action, feel free to share. We would love to see those and hear those uh, shared with us here on the uh, show. All right, so we're very excited to welcome her to the show. I love this shot. We're going to start with this shot because there she is, where she belongs, at that fabulous theater located in Waterbury, Connecticut. My very special guest, Samina De Laurentiis, works in the arts, for the arts, through the arts in Connecticut, of course. Samina De Laurentiis is the founder and artistic director of the Seven Angels Theater in Waterbury, Connecticut, which is now celebrating... 30 years. Isn't that incredible? After graduation in 1971, she pursued a successful career as a concert artist and actress traveling the world as a solo artist, working at such theaters as Washington's Arena Stage, The Public, Good Speed, LA Theater Works, performing in New York Cabarets, awarded the Manhattan Association of Cabarets Performance Award, and guest starring in such TV shows as... And we actually have some of those here for you that we can show you. L.A. Law. Mm hmm. Growing Pains. Yes, Alec Thick, Alan Thick, and the whole group. Also, Baby Boom and Framed as well. And Nonsense, Nun Crackers, and many, many more. That's just a few, to name a few. She created the role of. Um, 
uh, Senior uh, Amnesia in the off-Broadway production of, of Sister Amnesia, in the off-Broadway production of Nonsense, which of course was created by Dan Goggin. And Dan Goggin, as you know, is a dear friend. He created Nonsense, which still is an incredible, incredible performance if you've not seen it. Dan was a guest on the show uh, a few weeks ago. You can go back in the archives to see that if you want to see. Uh, we were having, uh, I think we were having lunch in Manhattan. It was uh, around the holiday time. And uh, Dan was a guest on the show and he created Nonsense. And uh, it's really incredible. If you have a chance to see it when it's performing, you should. There's also the TV show as well two and so much more they're working on. She received the New York Outer Critics Circle Award and uh, filmed Nonsense 1 and 2 with Rue McClanahan, who you remember, of course, from Golden Girls. And she was also on Maud with B. Arthur. The LA writer's strike of 1989 brought Samina back to her hometown of Waterbury, Connecticut, where the seed of Seven Angels Theater was planted. Asked for input in a local art study, a question was raised about the viability of a professional theater in Waterbury. She decided to assemble a group of friends to test the waters. And in December of 1989, she brought original cast members from Nonsense to Waterbury, Connecticut, to the performance space in the Mattituck Museum. There was overwhelming response. 21 sold out performances, including weekday performances at market industry ticket prices and numerous letters and calls to please continue. She convinced seven family and friends to launch Seven Angels Theater in August of 1990 as a nonprofit professional regional theater. And in September of 1990, the theater returned to the Mattituck Museum. And then in 1991, the historic Hamilton Park Pavilion became home to Seven Angels. With $125,000 of renovations made possible through generous private donations in support of the project, the theater opened with the world premiere of Balancing Act. Really incredible. While established as an equity professional theater, Samina was immediately committed to the theater's integration and relationship to the community. In the early years, she was also heading an arts council and was uh, mentored by Elizabeth McAfee. Samina was followed. Uh, Samina was following the Connecticut uh, R E A D I philosophy, which is irrelevance, equity, access, diversity, and inclusion. Long before it was an initiative, Seven Angels immediately began to have an impact both locally and throughout the state through a host of community and educational programs. Uh, really incredible programs too that they do. Um, in 2004, she established the Seven Angels Theater High School Halo Awards. Now in its 16th year, the Halo Awards is a Tony Award-like program in which high school students from around the state are celebrated and celebrate each other for their work, both on stage and backstage as well, which I think is really incredible. Also, there's a few other things that uh, you should know about her. She was the proud recipient of the 2007 Arts Leader of Connecticut Award. As a professional theater, Samina and Seven Angels Theater have received numerous nominations and awards from Connecticut Critics Circle. She has twice been named Best Director by the Connecticut Critics Circle, and she has devoted herself for the past 30 years to making a difference for thousands of people in her home state of Connecticut. But people pass through uh, and they see a show at the Seven Angels Theater it's really amazing. I want to let you know as well that um, the Connecticut Arts Hero Awards, she won that. She was bestowed that honor. That honor is for individuals who are doing extraordinary things in the arts, for the arts, and through the arts. Only One only needs to enter the spacious theater lobby and attend the many premieres, full equity productions, community theater productions, teen classes, and children's summer camps to realize Semina De Laurentiis has accomplished so much and she's a brilliant actress herself. And here is when she was actually a representative of the Emilio in Connecticut, made her uh, mayor of the day, Italian mayor of the day. She was bestowed that honor as well. And uh, this is the beautiful Seven Angels Theater, which is a wonderful, wonderful place. If you ever get a chance to uh, to go and see a show or you know somebody, 
uh, just go if you're passing through the state. And we're also going to talk about this, <laughs> where they did a George and Gracie. Uh, they paid uh, homage to George and Gracie. Yeah, because you know we have the George Burns doll here on the show. Anyway, let's welcome our very special guest who's joining us here, Samina De Laurentiis, a brilliant actress, as well as artistic director of the Seven Angels Theater. This intro, as like all of them, are worthy, I think, of Oscars. <laughs> welcome, my friend. How are you, Samina? I am fine, and thank you. It's so nice to be here, and thank you for that incredible intro. <laughs> and Only I love the too. <laughs> you're that's right. You're like, did I do that? Oh, I did that. I did that. And uh, only the best for you know our viewers and for our guests here on the show. Welcome. And and how have you been doing? You know, through all of this uh, craziness and unprecedented stuff that's been going on this year, Samina. Oh, just kind of thinking maybe it's going to end tomorrow or the next day or the next week or. I've cleaned all my closets, <laughs> polished my shoes. <laughs> uh, I've done all those things, along with going on a whole bunch of virtual Zoom meetings. And yeah, and how, what you're doing every night of the week is, so I guess you're, you're, you're not cleaning your closets, you're just yeah. <laughs> you're cleaning all of this every night at seven o'clock, so thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And you're getting welcomes from uh, the Netherlands, from Willie and oh, I love, I love Jennifer it. and Sharon, who's in Connecticut, and Danilo in San Diego. Hello there, Samina. Yeah. Welcome to Lovety Hall. <laughs> As they... I love that word. I love that word. It's Christopher in Ohio. Welcome, Samina. Sharon in Connecticut. Kathleen in New York City. And Christine oh, wow. says, Mary, Mary, Waterbury. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, which is cool. And um, Jason says, hey, Stephen, Mike, we get to be last name buddies. What are the chances? <laughs> Rini Katz. Wow, what a career. Welcome, Samina. And Rini has been is a cabaret uh, star for many years. Yeah. Jennifer Barry welcomes you. And Merlin in Innerkip, Ontario, Canada, says hello. And Christine welcomes you as well. Down in the Carolinas, Pamela Perkle welcomes you and uh, lots of others. Good to have you here. So you've cleaned your closets? Yes. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Going up many times. <laughs> are you doing any gardening? You know, they say yes. that, uh, yeah, they yes, say that, and Linda Odell in Florida says hello as well, Samina. Hello, Linda. Hello. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. What's that? I've always had a green thumb and I've always, um, you know, done gardening. We've done that for years. You know, when I was a kid, they introduced, the family introduced me to it. So I'm always doing it around the house, you know, and uh, they say that gardening right now is the number one thing, number one hobby that people are doing through all of this right now. And I think it's because you can, it's something that you can nurture and you can grow and take care of, right? Because it's something that you can also control in a way where there's a lot of things going on right now we can't control. So gardening is putting people back in touch with nature and it's it's terrific. I love gardening, yeah. I, and for many years too, I did discover some things when I first started doing it that I would buy all these great flowers and it would say it needs sun, but I would say, oh, I just love this flower. So I discovered that no matter how much you talk to them, or you <laughs> nurture them. If it says they need sun, they need sun. And, uh, and my brother gardens, so I just been watering his tomato plants. And I tried some tomatoes this summer, but the chipmunks ate them all. So chipmunks, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lots of chipmunks. So. Oh my God, that's funny. But um, well, it's, I'm glad that you're here, and it's a pleasure to have you here. And I appreciate our dear mutual friend Dan Goggin yeah. for recommending that you come on the show because he was a guest here a few weeks back and um about a month or so ago we had such a wonderful time and i've known him for years and you've known dan and it's uh, it's amazing it's such a small world isn't it oh dan dan changed my life so did he really nonsense changed my life changed everything around and so tell us about how that um happened the, the meeting with dan and then the nonsense connection for you so I, and I'm trying to figure out where to look. I'm going to look at this green. Box. I know it's crazy, isn't it? 
Okay, so I'm looking at you, but I'm not. But I'm as, lo as long as you don't look out the back door window, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> now I was, uh, uh, I was, I had worked on an off-Broadway show called "Have I Got a Girl for You," and the the uh, choreographer for it was Felton Smith. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was in Canada, uh, free up in Ontario. As a matter of fact, when uh, Felton called me and said that Dan was looking for someone to play Sister Mary Amnesia, and then he recommended me and. So uh, I decided, okay. And as a matter of fact, I was uh, I was dating this. <laughs> I was dating a gentleman at the time, and so I was kind of angry with him. So I said, okay, I'm going back to New York, and I'm going to go audition for this show. And uh, so that's what I did. And I went to Dan's apartment, as a matter of fact, and uh, auditioned for Sister Amnesia. And he said, do you want the role? And I said, sure, okay. And uh, that's how that's how it all began. And then the role at that time, uh, Sister Amnesia uh, does a, a, a puppet number, and with her puppet Sister Mary uh, Sister Marionette. And uh, so, uh, when we got into rehearsals and all, I asked Dan if I could try to do it as a ventriloquist, and I had not a clue about ventriloquism, but he said, "Go for it, go and try it." And so, so it all evolved in this incredible experience and. Here we are, 30 years later. Isn't that amazing? I've always loved ventriloquism. I used to have, I think I mentioned it the other night, I had the Charlie McCarthy doll, which oh. was a gift. Remember Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen, who was is Candace Bergen's father, who was Murphy Brown. Uh, we were we were actually just coming back from Connecticut and Massachusetts, visiting my mother's side of the family. My mother has a big family in New England. She's the youngest of 16. So big family. We came up from New York, from Long Island, and we would come up every August for a month to stay with our family and relatives. So my sister and I were playing with the Charlie McCarthy doll in the back seat of our parents' car as we were going back home to New York. And my sister pulled too hard on the string that was in the plaid jacket for Charlie McCarthy, a little too hard, and it busted the mouth. So when it's a, a ventriloquist doll and the mouth breaks, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Those things happen, but you know, so now I'm looking for a replacement, but that, how did you like doing that? That was cool, huh? I loved it. I loved it. And uh, uh, a lot, it, it, it came somewhat easy because I have a big overbite. I don't know if you can see my <laughs> And because of my overbite, I have a lot of play for my tongue in the back and, uh, so in, in being a singer, there was just a lot of mobility. And uh, yeah, so I tried a little bit and I tried one verse and then another verse and I got more and more and more until I was able to do the whole piece that I needed to do. But that was my overbite, yeah. So um, let's go back a little bit. I like to take the guests a little bit back down uh, the early years, memory lane. Uh, for you growing up, born and raised in Connecticut, right? Right. Yes, Waterbury. And Waterbury, Connecticut, the Brass City. The so brass. Um, were you always inspired by the arts and entertainment? Were you always, you know, a child that was always the, the kid that was making everybody else smile and doing little shows? And were you, or, and did you have people in the family who were, you know, from the arts and entertainment that inspired you? How did it all begin for you, Samina? My father loved music. Uh, he, he just loved music. And, and uh, so one day I was, I was maybe six years old or so. And uh, my brother, uh, who was uh, maybe a couple years younger than me, three years younger than me, uh, I decided he was misbehaving. And I came out to the family and made up a little song about how he was because I was tattling on him and, and I, I felt kind of, if I sang it, it wasn't really tattletaling. So, so, and uh, my parents thought I had a nice voice. It was just, just kind of strange that that's how it began. And then in school, I began singing a little bit and then they took me to, I really wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to take dance lessons. And um, so they said they were taking me to a dance lesson and it really was a singing lesson. I don't know how they were going to try to pass that off, but they did try to tell me I was going to a dancing lesson and all I did was sing. And uh, I just had this, this gift. So I was singing arias when I was 
eight years old, nine years old. Uh, and uh, then I began studying with the uh, maestro, Mrs. Ridgeu in New Haven, Connecticut. And my, my father would take me every week and I was, I was studying opera. So I was studying the classics and playing the piano. And, uh, and that's how it all began. And it was just that my father so loved music. And then I really got into, uh, really loved musical theater. Uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed opera, uh, but I was a coloratura soprano. So being a coloratura, there were all those cadenzas and all that. And, and but I loved the drama and the meat of the stuff. So uh, I was drawn towards musical theater, and uh, that's how that's how it evolved. But I promised my parents that I would get a degree that was stable. Um, so I went to Southern Connecticut State uh, College at the time. And my voice teachers were still in New Haven, so I would go and study every day music. But I went to, to become a teacher. Uh, and then as soon as I graduated, I went to New York uh, with, the, with the support of my family. And, and here it is. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah. how it all sort of evolved. So in New York, what were some of those early uh, projects, productions, and, and opportunities that came your way, Samina? in the Big Apple? So I started out and uh, I, one of my first things that I did was at the, it was all called the Equity Library Theater. And I was so thrilled about, about being part of that. And then I went off to my first summer stock and that's where I got my equity card, my full equity card and uh, uh, playing Hava and Fiddler on the Roof and um, somebody in good news. I can't remember the, the character's name. But that was my first summer stock job. And, uh, and then I just continued working from there. I went one day, I was, it was the 42nd Street, 48th Street Rehearsal Studios. And they used to let me go there and, uh, and use a practice room and uh, for free, whenever one was free. And I was just so grateful for that. And one day I was there practicing and next door was a company from the uh from the holland america cruise line that was auditioning people and so they asked the they asked the the receptionist there they asked um him who i what was going on and who i was so he set up this audition for me to go in and he came in in the audition and i remember they asked me they said um do you have an act and i hadn't, didn't even know what that was so <laughs> So, uh, so it was Jerry Ames was me. Jerry was Jerry Ames was an incredible tap dancer, just a phenomenal tap dancer, tap teacher. So Jerry said, "Yes, she does," and I, I said, "Okay." So we left, and I, I was offered this job to go on board, um, and they were doing weekly trips to Bermuda, and so I needed to come up with a twenty-minute act. So Jerry took me over to the old Brill Building to uh, a gentleman who had this little little room um and and he said what do you sing what do you know and he went into a file cabinet and pulled out all kinds of music and i left there that day with a 20 minute act uh singing this and that. and then jerry told me about patter I, that patter is stuff you talk in between songs and uh, so i that's how it all started so i was on and off cruise ships and on and off theater in new york for that was like eight years for about eight years and I traveled the world, mm. um, but that's how my, and then I built the act from there. So if you talk about Renee and Cabaret, that's, that's uh Oh, oh, Rainy Katz, yeah, Rainy she gets Katz. it. And uh, Dan Gogging is also watching tonight too. Oh, I, hey Dan. I, yeah, I, I uh, texted him earlier and I said, hey, Danny, uh, Samina's on tonight. He says, oh, I won't miss it. So he's, he's in there, he's in that lovely, uh, viewership right now, which is cool. He's, so nice. He's really a great guy, really a great guy. There was, he wanted me to meet Kay Ballard and there was going to be this opportunity, but she had passed away. So we didn't get a chance to do that. But um, did meet, uh, of course, Cindy Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, she was fabulous and, and we're trying to get her to come on the show. So that might be happening as well, which would be really, really cool because she's been in nonsense as well too. And so did you then go from New York straight to Los Angeles to LA? No, I was in then in New York doing my cabaret show. So I said, I really have to not do cruise ships anymore. This is back in cruise time when 
they didn't have these big shows. Everybody was a solo act. And so there were, there were ventriloquists on board. There were uh, a da usually a dance team. There would be a comedian. Uh, there would be the MC host. And, and that's kind of how the shows worked at that time. And then, uh, so I knew that I had to get off the ships for good because it was, it, it was a, a, not good for a career. So right. I decided to get off. I traveled to incredible places, God, incredible places around the world. And uh, what's uh, what are some of your favorite places? Because we have a worldwide audience. So what are some of the places oh, that wow. you loved that stand wow. out for you? Well, we went, I did four world cruises. So those went, it took three months to go around the world. So on those, we went, uh, we were uh, one of the first ships to go up the Pearl River in China once they opened up China. So that's going on. I'm talking about the 70s. So I'm not telling you how old I am. So, but it was in the uh, late 70s uh, when we did that. And, uh, and also to uh, St. Petersburg, Denmark. Uh, I was in the Netherlands. Uh, it was uh, uh, England all over. Uh, I loved, at that time it was called Bombay. It's now uh, Mumbai in India. It was just a, a magical place um in italy and just a place i never got to go was greece and and uh always wanted to and was always on a, a ship contract that was supposed to go there but never did so i have to i have to get back but very special um and then went to an island in the middle of the south atlantic between uh cape town and montevideo mm. Kristen de Kuna, and they, it's just this little island right in the middle of nowhere, and people lived there, and the ship docked there, and it was, it's an English, it's an English island, I believe, and uh, they had uh, expelled Napoleon there, so these exotic places that just uh, never would have had the chance to see, so I was traveling about, about the cruise ships, but I got off and then went to do back into New York to really settle. And so I was doing cabaret at the duplex, which I'm sure Renee knows, the old duplex. Um, and then Don't Tell Mamas, mm -hmm. uh, all those great old cabarets with Karen Mason. Uh, she was uh, on a guest a couple of weeks ago oh, on the show. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, it's a small world, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And and, and uh, her sister, Anne Hepton Calloway's sister, Liz Calloway. Yes. Uh, fabulous. I uh, was in the all we're all at that same time nancy lamont who is oh yeah and now my friend connected with nancy is david friedman oh gosh yes yes yeah yeah so uh, yeah small world it was just magical it was like it was like a, a, a saxophone yeah so we were all doing cabaret at that time it was like the, family yeah uh, it was the early 80s it would be the early 80s and uh and then i started doing more and more theater and have I got a girl for you. And then along came nonsense. And then it was mm -hmm. a whole different mm -hmm. road. Whole different then the whole and then, and then back to Waterbury, which I thought I'd be here for two years. And uh, I thought I'll start it in two years and then I'll go back. So it's 30 years later. <laughs> so, so the idea of the seven angels uh, theater, mm -hmm. was it first when you went, were in LA? the seed of the idea? Oh, the, yeah, there was no, yeah, there was no- uh, there, there was, was a no strike other, going on and- Yeah, the strike happened and I thought I, I was doing a, a good amount of TV work and getting a, a it, was, it was great. And it's a whole different, it's a whole different way of life out there and- um, Yeah, LA get, Law, Growing Pains, yeah, the series yeah. that people know so you were on. Yeah. People would gravitate and we would try to meet on Sunday brunches and stuff like that to talk about the East Coast. and. So the, when the strike happened, I thought it would be just a couple of weeks long and I came back to visit my family and, and it went on for months. Yeah, yeah. So that's how it evolved. I, and so this theater idea was never something I really but the Maddox, by the Maddox, the wonderful Maddox Museum right there. Yeah. yeah. And it's so it, it's so the seven angels is the seven families that seven family and friends seven they were angel like angels helping to get it off the ground and so that's, that's where that comes from i didn't realize that the seven yeah. angels, seven wow. angels paying homage to the people who made it help make it happen that's beautiful 
Thank you. Yeah. Are those families still in the area? Do they their their families still come to shows or their yes yes uh, grandkids yeah. or yeah. Now everybody's involved, and we have some new a, a lot of new people, new people on our board. Just a wonderful board, um, and it's it's been very special. It's made a difference in the community. Yeah, um, it's not the place like if you were to think, okay, where do you start a, a regional theater? <laughs> If you were to do any of those studies or anything like that, we just did it as something that we wanted to do for the community, and we, I thought it was a good idea. And let's experiment. And that's if you, it's like if you know them, what you know now, and and if you were to really to think about it, that's how wonderful things happen. You just don't be year old and wonder what if. That's always been my my. And what was I imagine the response? You know, when you got this off the ground, knowing you're the hometown girl. That must have been incredible. I mean, the way they re received you coming back home and then creating with a team of people and the angels and, and performers and everybody, the, the city itself supporting uh, this wonderful venue for people to come to. I would imagine the, the feedback for you, it must have been very meaningful and moving for you, especially to do it in your hometown. It was it was very special and uh, and I did it to because I love my hometown and they were the people have always been very good to me and and our, my family was uh, always there it's still there and uh, so it, it it was the support was really quite wonderful and uh, but I didn't want to it was not going to be a, a vanity showcase for me so I didn't want to be that I'm going to be in every show or doing it that was not the, the plan at all which I haven't over all these years, every so often I'll do something. And of course we did all the nonsenses, all seven or eight of them, I think. Um, so, but the purpose of it was what was to do, try to do new work, uh, established work. I, I really wanted to have educational programs, uh, to have programs there that weren't there when I was when I was growing up. And so that's what it was all about and, and really about making that difference. And then one of the most, rewarding things was we uh i wanted people to experience some new theater or titles to come to theater just because they wanted to come see good theater and not necessarily know the title of the show or whatever and so i remember after several years then uh i would go into new york and go see off-broadway stuff and try to see new shows and one day i walked into this off off-broadway theater and somebody said hello samina and i turned and i said we're subscribers we come and uh they were encouraged by Seven Angels to go into New York and start experiencing off-Broadway and off-off-Broadway. And I thought, yeah, that's that's kind of what we're about, to, to expand that envelope, you know. That's and, terrific. Wow. Did yeah. you just have an aha moment? Is that what that was? <laughs> somebody, I think somebody so. texting saying, we're watching. We love you. You're doing good. <laughs> You're babbling, Samina. That's what they're telling me now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, everybody loves it. There, there are a lot of comments. That they, <laughs> love the, they love the stories and, and you know, the backstory and what inspired. I like to get to the core and I've even done it in my professional work in television and radio. You know, I, I'm not necessarily about just the superficial headline. I like to know why people do what they do. And, and the audience then, the viewers are from around the world, are left with a deeper understanding and appreciation why people do what they do. And it's just decisions that they make in their lives and their career. And you've made some some brilliant ones and to have created that outstanding theater, um, that's something, that that's uh, that's legacy kind of uh, building. That's legacy building. And I wanna show some fabulous photos here. You were, was it Italian mayor of the day? Oh, yes, yes. Isn't that incredible? How did that happen? <laughs> Every year the Unico Club, in Waterbury, they, uh, uh, which is where the Unico Club was founded in Waterbury, Connecticut, uh, which is a support for Italian Americans across the country. And so in Waterbury, every year they pick a, uh, an Italian mayor of the day. So I was named Italian mayor of the day. And I got to go to the mayor's office and sit behind his desk. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. And, uh, uh, mayor O'Leary is our mayor of Waterbury, and he's uh, he's very supportive of the theater, and uh, and a, a lovely gentleman. So uh, it was it was a very special day. And that's Tony D'Amelio, and he's still a state legislator. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very, right. So it it's been um, it's yeah the theater. It's I I'd like to think it's made a difference for the town, and 
so many kids have come through and uh, so many, we've had so many wonderful programs and, and it's made a difference for so many youth. And that's kind of the very special to me. I but love this shot here. That's a, oh yeah, we just did our halos this year. We did halos virtual. Uh, because all, a lot of the schools had to cancel all their shows the last week. We go all year round. And so we had 82 schools participating this year. And wow. so we, did, we wanted to still be able to uh, honor them, support them. And so we did Halos Virtual. Uh, so we, all these schools, we brought them together for, we did two, three nights, three nights mm. of Halos Virtual. So what I have in my hand is a, is a stool because I'm too short behind the podium. So <laughs> I'm only five feet tall. So, um, so that I carry my stool, have, I carry my stool with me. <laughs> that is funny. I love this shot too. That's, oh, that was our uh, 25th anniversary. Yeah, that was our 25th anniversary. Um, we, you look very, very, you've got a phenomenal smile. Um, I don't know what you're talking about overbite or anything, but it works, no, as, far, just, it works as far as the smile. <laughs> Because it's fantastic. It's a very disarming smile that you have. Yeah. And you look so at home there. You look so like, it's almost like welcome to my home. You know, you're going to be entertained by all of us. It has that feeling, that that photo there. Really, yeah, really, really nice. Um, you also, which you, you saw the George Burns that I have that I do with, with the show. Oh, too much. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> the Gracie. So tell us about this, this sort of tribute. Uh, my dear friend, Bruce Connolly, uh, who was in that other shot of, of uh, George Burns. He's a wonderful George Burns. And so we decided to put together these George and Gracie um, uh, vignettes from, from the shows. And that's, George, uh, that's Bruce and I together. Bruce and I have known each other since college. Uh, we both went to Southern Connecticut, and uh, he also is in theater. He's the Barkley. He plays the dog Barkley on Sesame Street. And, oh, really? Uh, he was in the original uh, Godspell, uh, oh. playing Jesus, uh, back at the days in the promenade, uh, an incredible actor. And so he he and I have been George and Gracie for uh, for a few, for a, a couple of presentations now. So I, that was one of the... It was one of our rehearsal shots. <laughs> so. That's terrific. And there's another one here. Is this where he's doing George? That's George, yes. That's George. That's George. <laughs> That's terrific. And, and it was about um, introducing the younger generations to George and Gracie, right? There was a theme. Yes. yes. And, and a lot of young people came and we hooked them onto we hooked them on to the uh, to the old George and Gracie TV shows. Um, mm. and, and, uh, they, they're just, they're timeless. The comedy writing is timeless. Uh, mm. the writers were just incredible, just incredible comedy writing. Absolutely. When you look at all of this, I mean, you must be like, you can't believe how everything has just continued to flourish and continue to grow. I mean, operating, you know, a theater isn't the easiest task in the world. You have to have support, you have to have funding, you have to have uh, not years like this, you have to have people in the seats, great shows to offer. There's so much behind, you know, working in this industry, myself uh, in media, you know, I know what it's like to put the simplest things together um, and we've been on, I've been on 16 hour shoots for just a 30 second commercial. I mean, let's do it again. Now move it here. Now we want the lighting. Oh, the sun's going down. We got to come back tomorrow to match the shot. You know, there's so much that goes into it. But, um, when you look at it all, um, it's really been amazing. Hasn't it? An amazing run. Yeah. It's like you look back and you say, wow, we did all that. It's like, you don't stop to think you just keep going, right? You just keep going and and you make it work, but you love it so much that it, it's really not like work. Uh, mm -hmm. you, I'm sure you probably feel the same way. I think that's probably the only way you do a show every single night is that the love for it is, and the passion is there that uh, it, it, it feeds the soul and, uh, and that, you're, that, you're, that you've come up with your word levity because there's a lot of love in it. And, uh, and that's what you give back out. I think that's what we all do. 
Yeah, I think when you're you're creative and you, you have a desire to want to uh, inspire people and touch their lives and uh, lift them up from maybe some of the negativity of life uh, and you, you feed off the energy of other people and you give it back tenfold, it's a, it's a beautiful thing and we don't take it lightly, right? We really are blessed to be able to do these things. No, I think I'm sure you've received many letters and notes and emails and that the difference you've made in people's lives or you made them smile, you made them laugh and, uh, and you not even, you don't even realize it. And, uh, so you treasure those, you treasure those moments, you treasure those notes and those letters and, uh, and the difference that it makes for people and, uh, that you've made people laugh, uh, or think, um, converse, talk, uh, all those, all those things, the difference that it makes. When, when we did Next to Normal, I received this incredible letter from a woman who just, uh, I just made yeah. the whole run yeah. so worthy. So that's what happens. And then with nonsense, uh, there's so much joy to so many people around the world, around the world. And I, I last year, you know, two years ago, I guess it was, they were doing a, a production in New Zealand so I got a note from from the, some actresses in New Zealand that were doing it, and and then just last year there was a young man uh, from Sweden who uh, sent over to the theater and, and uh, tracked me down and said how much the nonsense, how how it cheered him up, and that he was in a dark yeah. place. Oh and yeah! Oh like, wow! You know, yeah. Dan Dog and Dan did this year, uh, and the clergy and the nuns were the biggest fans. They oh. laughed. They love it, right? Because they can identify with a lot of what uh, yeah. is being displayed, and yeah. So it was a, a lot of joy to a lot of people all around the world. So, and that's what it did for me. So I'm, you, I'm internally grateful. Absolutely, for those television buffs out there, do you remember the role you played on Growing Pains? Oh yes, I was um, the mother too. He was the next door kid and he was a bully and his name was Bernard. So Bernard was the next door neighbor and my husband's name was Waldo. And I, there was one thing funny there is go, um, so let's go Bernard, Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Joanna Kearns, uh, they were lovely cast. Joanna was a lovely, lovely, lovely lady. And um, she also was directing at that time over uh, some theater works uh, over at Patrick Kaufman. And uh, and she was very good friends with a good friend of mine, Dan Loria. And Dan Loria oh, sure, yeah, the actor, well. yeah. Well, Dan, Bruce, and I all went to school together. So, right. uh, yeah, so Dan, um, and Dan now is uh, putting together, he's called Live Theater, uh, Keeping Live Theater Alive. Oh, so great. we're part of uh, uh, four other theaters that have grouped together. And Dan is putting, we're theaters across the country um, all kinds of well-known celebrities that are reading original works and uh, poems or stories of their lives. So we'll be doing that. Uh, August 29th is our first one. So we have, in the first round is uh, uh, Alfred Molina and Tony Shalhoub, uh, Jim Pickens. Uh, who's else? Huh? There's six. There's six. Kim Rocking, Rockington, Jody Long. Right, I think. Oh, oh, and Joe Matania. So those are the six uh, that'll be in the first first round. And then all these other, John Lithgow is going to be there. Is that uh, virtual, happening virtually? Yes. He's there, ta each one of these actors is taping um, a, a short little vignette, five, maybe five, six, maximum 10 minutes long, each one. And then uh, they're doing a video. They send it on to uh, Jeremy Fletcher, who's a, a video, uh, who's an editor. And he's editing them, and then Dan is uh, is making these available uh, to theaters to help fundraise. It's a very special program, so we're delighted to be part of the. We're calling it Theater Five Alliance. Uh, so it's Durango Theater Festival, Laguna Playhouse, Berkshire Theater Lab, um, New Jersey Rep, and Seven Angels Theater. So we're the five who are launching this right now. So that is fantastic. How long ago did that idea come together? I got a call from Dan about maybe about a month ago, a few weeks ago. He comes up with these ideas, and then so, and that all goes back to somebody. I'm and I knew him in college. He was a football player. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
our drama our drama teacher uh, grabbed him in to do a, a, I think his oh it was a Shakespeare piece and I can't remember which one it was now but he was hooked after that he was just hooked so That's it. he knew what he wanted to do back. yeah of course everybody's tied back you know Anne Hampton Calloway and Ruth Calloway and Karen be there oh, long enough you know everybody <laughs> it's a whole network of people in the industries absolutely absolutely I want to uh, share some footage that we have so the audience can see some of this in action. Um, the, this first one is, let's see, it looks like Best July. We're gonna bring that one up, we'll take a look at it, and then we will talk about it right after. All okay. right, so here's some of the fabulous action at the Seven Angels Theater, the uh, incredible Seven Angels Theater in Waterbury, Connecticut. Here we go. George, you can't use that old trick on me. This way, lady, you can tell it all to the sergeant. Oh. oh, my officer, what a nice place you have. Hello? What's he in for? <laughs> He's the sergeant. What are you whispering for? Doesn't he know it? <laughs> what have we got here, Johnson? This lady was caught selling football tickets illegal. And as a matter of fact, I would have sold them, too, if he hadn't butted in. Here's the report. Lady, this officer says you're a speculator. Oh, thanks. I think he's one to. <laughs> Lady, I'll take those tickets. Oh, good. Oh, and you know you are fortunate to have them, too. It's a sellout. $20. Don't you know this is against the law? Oh, well, then don't use them and you won't get into trouble. <laughs> Johnson, you got an aspirin. Oh, I see you use carnation in your coffee. Say, do you know something? Cows are smarter than people. Some people, yes. Uh -huh. You know why? Mm. They're smart enough to put their milk in these little cans, and you can't even get it out without punching the hole. <laughs> Now, let's get this straight. I'm not buying these football tickets. Well, let's get this straight. I'm not giving them away. Everybody else bought them. They're remarkable. All right, all right, quiet, 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 please. Oh, that's silly. How can you get quiet when you keep out of the When I say quiet, I mean quiet. Nothing. You've given me a headache. Well, lady, do you know what you can get for striking that officer? Well, whatever it is, just add it to the 20 he already owes you. <laughs> this happens to be a police station. Oh, I know it. I know it. Sergeant Hammer here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, right away. Johnson, have car 12 go to this address. See the woman about a battery complaint. Some police station. Why aren't you out catching crooks instead of fixing batteries? <laughs> Lady, please, let me try to explain the trouble you're in, huh? Look, I'll find the ordinance. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Now listen, carefully. Selling tickets except by an authorized agent or representative of the principal is illegal in violation of ordinance number nine seven four <laughs> this is very interesting mm. well go ahead in violation of ordinance number nine seven four eight oh my goodness how can you see through these <laughs> don't you ever clean them oh you need someone to take care of you you ought to get married Mary, lady, I've got ten children. Oh, when you get home with these nice, clean glasses, you may find out you have more. <laughs> <laughs> now, back to this ordinance. Oh, what's this? That's a fingerprinting outfit. Oh, what does it do? By putting ink on your finger and making a print, we can tell who you are. Who am I? <laughs> Johnson! Get in here! Johnson! Jack! Johnson, you always wanted to be a sergeant, right? Why, yes, sir. Well, you are. <laughs> oh, thank you. Congratulations. Now, look, we haven't got all day, so... Who am I? <laughs> he didn't know either. <laughs> now, look, all I need to know is your name and address. Oh, well, so. do you any good? I'm married. Lady, can you identify yourself? Well, of course I can. I'm... Well, well, wait a minute. 
Yes, that's me. <laughs> Sergeant, I want my own job back. I'll take you dispose of this case. Look, lady, do you know what you can get for selling those tickets? I certainly do, and I'm only asking $20. Well, you can sell us. You can't get no, these any place. It's, it's really a sell. All right. Here's your $20. Oh, thank you. Oh, goodbye, Sergeant. Oh, wait, officer, you forgot your ticket. You forgot your ticket. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. That was thank you. That's a, a and, archive role. So and he gives that. you his blessing. He loved it. It brought oh, a lot of he's just what? so it's so much fun playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love you, Gracie. You know that kiddo. <laughs> That's perfect. That was great. How did you like playing that role? I mean, taking that on and what was the rehearsal like? And did you end up with uh, a sore throat after? Or? No, yeah, she, uh, she, they're, they're delight. They're, they're just wonderful, wonderful characters in there. And the writing is just so, I mean, we found in the writing, if you change one word, it, it's that, that they were they were geniuses the, oh. the writers that they had so it was a lot of fun and then of course uh, Bruce and I were we've known each other so for so long that it was it was like family oh yeah so how long did that run for uh four weeks four yeah. weeks and I bet you everybody loved it right it was a lot of fun yeah it made people smile uh go home it was just go home and have a good time. You know, it's just that it was that kind of evening, and uh, Absolutely. not yeah. quite sure what they were coming to see. And then it introduced uh, it introduced George Burns and Gracie Allen to a lot of new people and younger people. And That's that right. Was, yeah, Christina says uh, you uh, deliver the lines at just the perfect time and oh. way. Very funny. Christine says funny. Kathleen smiles from Willie in the Netherlands. Marilyn in Wichita, funny. Merlin in Ohio. And uh, Inner Kip, Ontario, Canada says, oh, ha, ha, ha. Christine Forward sounds like Gracie. She's in Connecticut and she's been to the Seven Angels Theater as well. And uh, we have some more. I want to set something else up here too. And let's see. Here is another clip. I'm gonna share this. Which one's this? What are you showing? It's funny. Here's some sort of weird. Let's you can hear like UFO sounds in the background. I don't know. Wi-Fi can be crazy. I tell you, the internet. Um, okay, so let's set that up. So, do you does do you recognize that scene? I uh, yes. Oh, a John looks like John Swanson, who was uh, Harry. Harry and uh, and Blanche, and that's the set. In Continuing Florida. the George Burns and Gracie yes. Allen theme. Yes, in All there. right. It was in his living room. The set, the set looks terrific. Oh, it was a great set. Yeah, it was a great. Yeah. And off off to the right was the stage. Right was the Morton's house, and oh yeah, we go in between the two houses, which is what they would do. Um, on the TV show, and they would walk onto the set. So it was it was the beginning of television back then. It was back in early TV, and oh, George yeah. Burns, right? And they were very savvy business people, also George and Gracie. Very much so. Very much, and they, so they were one of the first ones to actually tape their show, uh, uh, so that it, it wasn't live, live, and uh, uh, so like they, live, live to uh, film, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And uh, so the first ones that you said, they were very savvy, very, very incredible very people. Very business minded. Absolutely. We lost, lost Gracie way too early, of course. Yeah. Way too early. Way too early. Well, here is another wonderful clip from the Seven Angels Theater. And we uh, thank you and, and Paul and the folks at the theater for providing these fabulous clips exclusively for our show tonight we really appreciate that and and here we go here's some more levity and lovity on the gym master show live oh, 
George, you can't use that old trick. I need you. Oh, I need to use your phone. Well, of course. Now, you understand why you're staying here, Natalie? Sure, I understand. Blanche couldn't get Egghead out of town. Oh, now calm down. Oh, I can't help myself. Why couldn't my daughter have married a man instead of what she got? Oh, now you shouldn't say that about Harry. Oh, he admires you. In fact, he thinks you're too good for him. He does. <laughs> I have heard him say over and over again, what have I ever done to deserve a mother-in-law like that? Come on over, I'm with Gracie. Yes, mother, it's raining in Seattle, huh? Good for the roses, yes. Harry? Yeah, I'll tell him. Now remember, until I get this straightened out, George mustn't know my mother's staying there. <coughs> oh, don't worry, Blanche. George won't even know it's your mother. <laughs> what is all this? Oh, uh, well, you see, Blanche would be embarrassed if my husband knew that her husband wouldn't go to the Friars Club like my mother made him when she was here. And, and you can't blame her. So that's why you have to be somebody else. Well, I'm glad you added those last few words. Those I understood. <laughs> I gotta be somebody else. Right. Wow, this sounds like fun. Who will I be? Oh, it's more fun than you think because I don't know yet. What should we have a guest for? Oh, George. Um, I would like you to meet Ronnie's friend, Marie Bordeaux, the French <laughs>
What I love is watching you watch that. <laughs> you can see me watching it. Oh, of course. You're sitting there like with such pride and your head is tilted and you're you're loving it. Yeah. It's it's brilliant. It really is. You guys really, really um I always wish you could bring that back. <laughs> Four weeks is not enough. <laughs> so, but a little side she note. Wants to return. <laughs> the the woman who is Natalie, uh, she's uh, is her. That's Sarah Knapp, and I know Sarah Knapp. Sarah Knapp uh, was a sister amnesia in a, in a whole lot of nonsenses, and Sarah Knapp took over the role of sister amnesia in New York way back when. Wow. So we go way back, and we've never been in nonsense together because we've both been amnesias. But as she as she's as tall, I am as short. So, <laughs> so um, we've had her at the theater several times now, and, and and she's just she's just a brilliant actress, and and she also is a a composer. I mean, a lyricist, and her husband uh, Stephen, they're composers, and just in great, yeah. So she's I originally met her via Danny in Nonsense. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. And John Swanson who plays Harry Morton, uh, John and Dan and Bruce and I all went to college together. So I know John Swanson and he lives in Wallingford. Uh, wow, so, Wallingford, Connecticut. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> Everybody stayed in touch, which is yeah, so it's like kind of maybe meant to be. Yeah. So to, those are things that are like your serendipity in a way. And is that the right word, I guess? Yes, it's absolutely very serendipity. Lovely. It's very lovely. Very love it, exactly. And uh, you really played Gracie well, Merlin, in Inner Kip, Ontario, Canada, says. Oh, and you did, yeah. Do you, do you feel like you've, you've always had a little Gracie in you? My mother was Gracie Allen. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when I created so Sister Amnesia, I always, always said that Sister Amnesia was a cross between, uh, between my mother and Gracie Allen. Mm. And that was... Uh, uh, my, mother would, yeah, my mother would give me advice like I once came home and I mean I had broken up with a boyfriend and I was very upset and I, my mother said don't worry Samina. The world was over. You no know, she, and she said don't worry there's always more fish on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mother. <laughs> so very similar. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. So, so your mother was uh, had the entertainment in her as well, but didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, she was very. She was very, very funny. innocent, and she had a very. Uh, she had a very beautiful singing voice that I never really knew until she was much older. As a matter of fact, she was. They keep asking you to sing. <laughs> they I never that. Yeah, they I didn't know that until. Yeah. Until she was in her eighties, and I heard her singing, and I thought, what. And she's all, oh, yeah, I I used to sing when I was younger, kid, and then she just stopped. Yeah. Yeah, story. Seeing the, uh, Christine says, so very funny. Oi, oi, seeing these clips makes us miss live theater. Serena did a superb job. And, and Jennifer asks this question of every guest, it seems. It's a new thing. Do you like the mountains or the ocean? <laughs> oh. I'm the ocean because I grew up, you know, uh, on the coast, I live on the coast. I grew up by the ocean. From I love the mountains, but the ocean really calls me. I love the ocean. The yeah. ocean I calls love, me. I love the ocean, the sound yeah. of it, the the rhythm, the tide, the sunsets, the going in it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Anne says, "Sing for us." Merlin sing. says, "Sing for us." Sing. Oh gosh. Uh, uh, sing. What could you possibly come up with? I mean, <laughs> I sing. Uh, I'm sure many times you sang for your supper. <laughs> sing for your supper. Oh gosh, uh, uh, I, I could sing Happy Birthday. No, uh, is anybody's birthday out there? A couple of them this week. Yeah, you want to <laughs> sing Happy Birthday together for whoever's sure, birthday? Yes, that's an easy one, right? And that one I think is uh, public domain. <laughs> we're okay. Remember, for years it wasn't, and I think on the air and anywhere else, 
you couldn't really sing the whole thing. That's why sometimes you'd go to restaurants and they would say like, happy, happy, happy birthday. They would change the words. So I think it would be like $10,000 or something. Oh, we don't do that. If it was publicly, so I think, yeah, they said, I don't know if it's 90 years or, or since the original people passed or whatever, but um, yeah, we could definitely do that if we, if we'd like to, we want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, All right. I got an idea. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You have an idea? Yeah, you want to? You're gonna pick the key. Well, who's gonna pick the key? You want to pick it, and then I'll. I tend to be uh, alto, so I'm a little deeper, but I can go well, high. I'll, I'll, I'll pick a lower key. How's that? Right? Yeah, whatever works. Okay. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear, dear everyone. Love it is. Happy birthday to you. Wow, wow. That's fantastic, huh? I'm clapping for you. We clap for each other. I know everybody at home is clapping. <laughs> that That is historic, groundbreaking, and I think deserves something like a statuette of some kind. <laughs> that was, we were in perfect harmony there. It was we were. Really, we'll have to, I'll have to come up to uh, Waterbury and we'll have to do it. <laughs> that was really, really great. Happy birthday. So we got a whole trend here. Everybody loved it. Jim that was sister in that. that that's a, an original puppet from nonsense yeah jim and samina on the road and there was no cover charge for that either folks that was no cover charge you two are great thank you very much willie and netherlands she's still up she gives us, oh, book, us. book us willie yeah book us we'll come on <laughs> over that was great and it was ad lib and it wasn't rehearsed and we just did it on the on the fly which sometimes is the best way to do things all these uh oh, standing you. ovations and uh good stuff good stuff sister marionette from kevin Sturmer. oh kevin good to see you kevin as well yeah kevin let's Sturmer. let's do the puppet again uh we'll make the screen big and we'll show the puppet again the puppet she's the Oh, I just dropped. How y'all doing out there? It's so good to be on the Gymnaster Show. Oh, I'm just so loving this. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> How you doing, guys? How are you? <laughs> so, Sister Annette, can you believe that you're on the Gymnaster Show? It's really great. I can't believe it. And he's so cute. To you behave yourself. <laughs> can't top that, huh? Oh, you love her, don't you? You love her. She's very special. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Her nose is her nose is deteriorating a little bit. Are you talking about my nose? <laughs> so anyway, yes. Yeah. <laughs> does she want to? Does she want to say a prayer for us at all? She's probably doing a lot of prayers this year. I don't doubt it. She's probably working overtime. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Maria gratia plena, Maria gratia plena, Ave, Ave Dominus, Dominus tecon. Benedicta to in noli eredos, et dene dictos, et dene dictos, fratus entres, entre 
Christmas toy. Yes, oh, are they Maria? Unbelievable. <laughs> She's incredible. Samina, Samina, don't lose her because she's amazing. She's fine. Um, do you want, a glass, you want a glass of water at all? Or? I, didn't that. I didn't expect her to sing. No, you never know. planning on singing that. No, puppets and dolls, and you know, uh, we've got two, we've got Jimmy here. I mean, you've got silver, we've got Genie pops out of the bottle every once in a while. It's you know you got to have light, levity, and love in life, don't you? You really do. Yeah, you really do. Absolutely. Uh, Kathleen in New York loves it. Christine Lovety has really come to life now that Samina's puppet loves it. <laughs> Jennifer, Italian salute day. She says. Merlin is uh, she's standing on her roof right now, clapping in Canada. Marsha Line in Massachusetts, love it. She's watching on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Kathleen loves it. More claps. <laughs> From Wichita, Kansas. Uh, this oh, I is, love Kansas. This is, uh, we got, no, no, it wasn't Samina singing. It was, it was, it was the sister that was singing. It wasn't, it wasn't Samina, right? You weren't singing. It was, it was. I wasn't, I wasn't singing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, Samina. You're amazing talent ours. We're so proud of you here in the Constitution State in Connecticut. Great stuff. Great stuff. And, um, you know, I have something else to show the audience as well. I'm going to set this one up. And this is another great one here. And it's... Um, more from uh, the Seven Angels Theater. You have a ball doing all of this, don't you? you? You love what you do. You're living your bliss, aren't you, Samina? Yeah, I do love it. I do love it. There are days that I'm like, well, you gotta be kidding me. But there are days that are just, most, yeah. most, always something happens that says, yeah, that's why I'm doing this. This, this has definitely been a year of you gotta be kidding me, hasn't it? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Without this is problem. well. This this is where, and I've had a couple of conversations on the air about this. This is where we really need to do the things that are soothing and comforting. Going out and gardening, going out into the mountains, going to the ocean, nature, mm -hmm. uh, exercising, walking, but also uh, the arts, music, surrounding yourself with music, uh, watching you know, maybe nostalgic TV shows that make you feel good, comedy, um, old movies, uh, supporting the arts as well. Uh, because these are the things that through the roughest of times get us through life, right? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Because life always, life always has challenges, some more so than others. This is- This, this is the year to- <laughs> This but, is the, the year testing all of us, right, exactly. But uh, as long as we stay together and everybody loves one another and we're empathetic and I don't want it to sound Pollyanna, but as long we, I think we're getting a message that we all need each other. And, and the only way to pull out of things like this is to do it together. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really important. You're That's absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And it's bringing all the, like all these people that you're bringing from all over the world to, to watch your show and, and enjoying, enjoying what you're doing. Uh, that's so that's so incredible and think uh, that you're reaching the people you're reaching how far away that what 25 years ago that wouldn't have been possible right barcelona <laughs> brazil yeah. australia yeah we've all come to know you and, and you've made this possible congratulations thank you very much thank you very much and here's more from our friends at the seven angels theater Another great clip here and, and enjoy, and then we'll be back and we'll chat about it. Here we go. Oh, George, you can't use that old trick on me. This recipe is so silly. It says separate two eggs, but it doesn't tell you what parts are to separate <laughs>
And this is why I'm here. Oh, well, thank you, but I already have several copies. <laughs> so, you're the crook my husband slapped around. Hey, look, lady, your time is running out. Don't waste it. Oh, and you're so right. I'm making a walnut cake and I've already got it started. Anybody here with you? Yeah. Who? You. <laughs> hey, lady, are you all there? Mama? I said, are you all there? Oh, a southerner! Of course I'm here. Where'd you all think I was? <laughs> How do you like that? I come here to blow a dance brains out, and I find out somebody think me too. <laughs> Terrific, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you're so much fun with that. And cracking oh. with the gun. And I vote for the return of George and Gracie oh. and the Mortons and the whole thing. That was really, not only was it great to expose the younger generations to that, because that's good, wholesome nostalgia, which is missing these days. You know, there there's so much stuff that is, uh, you know, and there's a place for everything, but there's so much reality, so much in your face stuff these days that um, I think when you go back a little bit to um, a simpler time every once in a while, it's a beautiful thing to do. I mean, I've, believe me, I've been watching the Dick Van Dyke show reruns and I've always liked Dick Van Dyke and, you know, Lucy and, and somebody said that 
what they were watching reminded them of Jackie Gleason and the Honeymooners and all of this. And these these things have stood the test of time for a reason: quality, um, simplistic, and relatability. It's the relatability you can relate to the characters and to uh, you know just to the simple things that are um, happening which I think is, is amazing because it's something that uh, I think affects uh, all our lives. It's, it's very special. And, 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 uh, and you're having, you should see Samina's face during this. She's giggling. She's playing along. She's reliving being Gracie. That's uh, I, I was going to step back in case you were going to throw any, throw any water at me. <laughs> fun. You mentioned Dick Van Dyke. Oh, love him. I was, 15 years old and I won a, there was a, <laughs> there was a, a, a radio station in Hartford, a rock and roll radio station, I forget which one it was. Uh, it was like the number one rock and roll station in, in Connecticut. And they had a, yeah, it might've been, yes, I think it was, it was WDRC. Yeah. And they had a contest, a talent contest. And what it was was Danny Thomas, the, Danny Thomas had a variety show on TV. Right. So they were sponsoring this this contest, and they were choosing someone from the West Coast, the Midwest, and the East Coast to be on the Danny Thomas show. And uh, so they came to Hartford, and they were going up and down the East Coast. And so I went and to WDRC, and I that I was I was an opera singer at that time, and I I sang Musetta's Waltz from La Boheme. And I won. And so it was an incredible experience that I went on the Danny Thomas show. And on that show was Dick Van Dyke and Juliet Prowse. And, and I was on singing the uh, Musetta's Waltz. So jump ahead like a year after that. Now WDRC is doing this huge concert at the Bushnell, rock and roll concert. And Chubby Checker was coming. And who else? Somebody was on. There was like a TV personality. It was this big, big rock and roll concert at the Bushnell. And because I had won this contest, I was asked. To, I was asked that to, uh, to be on the show, which I kind of really needed to be on the show. But the most rock and roll piece I had in my repertoire was I could have danced all night from My Fair Lady. So. That's what I sang at this rock and roll concert at the Bushnell on WDRC. I know, but it was a hit. Was, I think they thought it was a comedy act. I'm not sure. With screaming teenagers. So then there was a night show, and my company said, we can't do I could have danced on it. We just can't. So we decided that we would do Shangri-La, which was kind of a hit song at that time. Yeah. So I went and sang, and we grabbed some musicians that were there someone played the drums and so i sang as rock as i could be singing shangri-la your kiss <laughs> do i remember that yes yeah, so that was just a little side note yeah you have a you have a great laugh you have one of those laughs <laughs> <laughs> that if you were laughing in an audience, everybody else is going to laugh because you kicked it off. With well, nobody was laughing at that. Not at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Memories, yeah. So I'm hearing yeah. a little bit of uh, Laura Petrie in your voice too. A little bit. I bet you can go, "Oh, Rob." Oh, Rob. <laughs> See, that sounds like Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> it sounds just like Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> Well, yeah, she was wonderful. You know how people get very, and, and she actually, her resting spot is in Fairfield, Connecticut. That's, oh, that's where, yeah, and it's open to the public. It's a regular uh, cemetery in Fairfield, oh, Connecticut. She from, she, uh, from New York originally, lived in Los Angeles while doing Dick Van Dyke and uh, Mary Tyler Moore and other specials, and then moved, uh, she uh, married the doctor from New York and they made their home in Connecticut. That's and then right. when she passed, she's in a, in a open to the public family cemetery in Fairfield, Connecticut. I had no idea. I had, oh, I, I, yeah, I that's where she, yeah. yeah. You know, it's was, it was interesting. You know how people get very um, attached to um, characters? Uh, like they, they really thought that Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore were married when they watched the Dick Van Dyke show. 
So it was really funny. Uh, Mary had moved on to the Mary Tyler Moore show. And of course, Dick uh, was very happy for her and wanted her to, they were ending the show anyway, because they said five years, we're at the top, let's wrap. So Mary had the opportunity. They did a couple of, uh, you know, uh, the new Dick Van Dyke show and some others where Mary and Dick were brought back together. Actually, you can see all of these on YouTube. You can even see the Mary Tyler Moore show that she did on CBS. Really cool stuff, vintage stuff. But um, Dick Van Dyke did another version of the Dick Van Dyke show called the new Dick Van Dyke show, I think. And Hope Lang was playing his wife. And it was a totally different scenario. It wasn't, you know, being a comedy writer, living in New Rochelle with Buddy and Sally and Mel and all of that, Alan Brady. He was, it was a totally different setting. And, and Hope Lang, who was blonde versus the brunette Mary, played his wife. He said, I remember in an interview that a woman came up to him in the supermarket and like slapped him on the shoulder. And she was very angry at Dick Van Dyke because he said that he was cheating on Laura <laughs> because he, he, had yeah. another, he had another wife, which was Hope Lang playing the new character in the new series. That <laughs> Dick Van Dyke or Rob Petrie was cheating on Laura with the other woman. And he's like, I'm, I'm only an actor. That was just a show. <laughs> People get attached. Yeah. It's, isn't it amazing how that works? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some yeah. of those stories are really, uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Contagious laugh you have. Contagious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even that sound you just made. <laughs> was that a little afterthought? <laughs> <laughs> laughter is the best medicine, right? You know, I agree. I'm big with laughter, absolutely. Well, I'm uh, Irish on my father's side of the family, so there's laughter definitely in there. Great storytellers. What a nice lady, very talented. Thanks for sharing with us. Um, that's good stuff. Entertaining for the soul. Not much like that around anymore. Um, and they're talking, of course, about uh, George and Gracie. Um, uh, we all love Jim for doing this show as we get to meet famous entertainers and to be friends with people all over the world. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Kathy says, looking good, sister. Lots of love for sister Robert Ann. That's Kathy Wilcox Dermer. Rini Katz says, fun. She's loving it as well. I mean, I have to go and listen to, I have to go on YouTube and watch the whole thing. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of great comments we've have here, and it's great. There's comments on YouTube, comments on uh, Facebook. Jennifer, she's really zen. She always lets us know when she's zen, and she says, "This is so neat. I'm having so much fun." When you got to sing <laughs> through uh, the puppet, they love that as well. Um, it's very nice to laugh. Yes, that's very very important. So fun tonight, Samina. You know, when you when you look at all of this, what are some of the um, the blessings that this continues to bring you as somebody who's not only a performer, but you are the artistic director for the Seven Angels Theater as well, and help facilitate the creation of this uh, historic and legendary beloved theater that brings such great entertainment to you know, decade, 30 years, 30 years of entertainment to the region. Uh, when you look back at that, especially with the 30th anniversary being this year and congratulations. And, you know, if, uh, if you end up doing something, you know, either virtual or you end up doing something um, where it is at the theater or something, let me know. I'd be happy to be a part of it. If you need an MC host or anything, just let me know. Be very happy to do that. When you look at all of this and you're now capping this 30th year, could you have imagined that any of this would have turned out to what it is now? Oh gosh, no, no. It was, and, and that's how wonderful things happen, right? Uh, you just, a door opens or a little bit and you go through it and, and that you, you just do it. And uh, I just always ask for guidance. That's always 
been my prayers, just guidance. I'm not asking for things, but for guidance and for uh, and to and to be grateful. So I think there's so much for all of us to be grateful for, and I always find those things to be grateful for. It's so like every Thanksgiving we take five kernels of corn, and we uh, eat in a plate, and then we take on each kernel and think of five things that you are grateful for. And when you stop and think about that, it's uh, it means it means a lot. So these 30 years, um, it was meant to be. I can only say I truly think it was meant to be, and uh, uh, and the difference it has made. But it's not just me. It is so many people have made it possible. Uh, so many people have come through the doors, and so many people, the people who work, who have worked there, and um, who have performed there and worked there and given of their time and their town and their energy and they're so committed uh we have a a wonderful board a wonderful staff uh and it's wonderful to see that uh people that met there years ago still are in contact with each other or they're they've they've become close friends uh we've had many marriages there so uh, uh of actors that have met for the first time so they've come back to seven angels and done a like proposed to uh on on our porch um because it's 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 been magical, so that's always kind of really nice to nice to to know. And the theater is housed in in this historic building that's is very important to Waterbury, and uh, it was it was a pavilion built in 1929. It was a dance hall, so all the big bands would play. They would play in Boston, and on their way to New York, they would stop at the Hamilton Pavilion. And it was a big open space, and there was a stage, the same stage that we perform on now, uh, only we've redone it and we've renovated it. It was higher, but all the big bands used to play on this stage, and they would dance in this pavilion. And over the years, and especially when we first started, I can't tell you how many couples would come up to me and say, I met my husband over there leaning against that post, uh, or I, you know, I first met uh, my my wife. Uh, it was it was this gathering place, and uh, so it has this very special energy about it. Um, also has a couple of ghosts, <laughs> but, <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it has it's a very very special place, and so I'm I'm proud that we brought it back to life, and uh, the thousands of people we bring through the doors every year now. Um, it's it's very special, and that it's. It's just it's brought it's brought this building back to life this, this historic building and so we have a great staff um jim who sent you um uh, uh i mean paul so jim <laughs> paul who sent you all these videos uh, is our uh who does all of our marketing and, and now with this covid i mean everybody is still very supportive and committed i have a young staff there that was going through and painting things and clearing out our costume shop and just doing all these things that we couldn't get done, but um, they're very special. Tisha and Katrina and Lynn and Chris and Melissa and Jewel and I don't need anybody. Angelica, uh, uh, Paul, just very- Takes a village, special. right? It really takes a village. Yeah, it takes so many to to, to make it happen. And like I said, a, a, a great board. And, oh, and, and our president is one of our founding board members, Alan Sobriano. So he's been there through the thick and thin from the very, very beginning. So uh, mm. it's very special. So, yeah. And as far as the acting, the performance, that's near and dear to your heart too, isn't it? You love that. Me performing? Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I forgot about me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> applause, you know, uh, I love the applause uh, and but the laughter is so great. But then, then to do, to do incredible good work, we try to do the, we try to do a, a, a diamond show on a rhinestone budget. Uh, that's kind yeah. of what we, what we strive for. So I, I just, and, and <laughs> and you succeed. What are some future plans? Are there now that you hit 30 years with the theater, uh, you have big dreams for other productions and other events and other things for the theater uh, itself? Well, we had we had plans for the 30th season, but now with all of this, everything is shifted and changed. Um, we're, we're a union actors equity. 
so uh, those wonderful clips that you're seeing from George and Gracie, they gave us permission. The reason why they're so, such a far shot, they're just archivals that we just shoot for for our archival. And they the gave theater. Us, right. They gave us permission to do these clips to try to keep the theater relevant and in front of people. Very nice. Um, as we're looking for next year, uh, one of the shows we did this past year was Love and Spumoni, which was a, an original play by Jacques Lamar, which you probably know Jacques. Mm. So um, uh, we may, when we come back to do live theater again, we may do that as one of the first things is sort of like a, a gift back to the community and, and uh, offer it to have some performances for a lot of the essential workers and people who work so hard that we can give back. And then- That's very beautiful. Yeah. and then. And then we're not quite sure because everything is so how many people yeah. do you have on stage and how far do you need to be from the audience and uh and can you please know? pass the popcorn and don't spill it <laughs> you know i mean it's so. all pass the popcorn don't <laughs> don't throw it <laughs> six feet away six feet away six so. feet away from each other ten feet away from our refrigerators <laughs> Oh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> that was very Gracie. That was very Gracie. You're still in the Gracie role, aren't you? Oh, I get it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll call that a Wi-Fi delay. It's a Wi-Fi delay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we were going to do In the Heights. That was going to be our big musical next year. Great one, yeah. Yeah. Just don't, so nobody knows, but we'll be back. We will be back. You could okay. change it to in the house because <laughs> that's where we've all been. <laughs> in the house. Everybody's in their house. We're in the house. <laughs> no, in the house. Cleaning those closets. <laughs> <laughs> and then we do have a, there's a show uh, out of Florida, uh, Florida Studio Theater called Unchained Melody uh, that we're planning to do. And we were planning to do it as part of the season. Uh, it was it huge success down there. So uh, we've licensed that from them. And uh, so we're planning to do that for the upcoming upcoming season and all. And then we have- uh, do, you have to go, do you have to go check a cake in the oven? And uh, is, the, is that the bell for the cake? <laughs> <laughs> you got you got bread baking? <laughs> it keeps, it, it, it's a reminder that's telling me to pay my mortgage tomorrow and I don't know. How oh. to down, so. But we have cup coming, we have, um, uh, we have a thing called In the Box, which is a virtual uh, a virtual program that we're doing. And we've teamed up with uh, it's the Adirondack Theater Festival and, and uh, Mills Entertainment and uh, Bloomington, Indiana. And so it's, we're just launching it in September, but actually it's In the Box. The first one is with Max Major in its uh, magic show. Mm. So if you buy it, you have to buy a ticket, but it's for your whole household. So you can gather friends together. And then you will get in the mail a box and in the box will have all the things that you need to do to have this interactive experience with this virtual show that's going to be done. So the first one is a uh, uh, magical mystery or mystery something, but it's a magical, it's magic. And it's with Max Major and uh, he was just on America's Got Talent, I think. And uh, uh, so that's the first one. And, and if you buy a ticket, you get this box. And in the box are all these goodies to play. So it's very innovative, very, very different. And then we have another one coming up is a cruise. And so you'll get a box and in the box will be like your sunglasses and a towel and all kinds of. So that's coming up. That's September 10th through 12th. So we're trying to do things that are um, different, innovative, keeping right. our audience involved. Um, and if anybody has any ideas, just send them to me. I just, yeah. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> you know, have an idea, send, send it on, you know. Have at it. We got a nice comment here. Thanks, Jim Samina, for such a lovely evening of enjoyable conversation, learning so much more about uh, Samina's career and the clips from the theater was such a treat, such talent. We're grateful for you both helping us to laugh and smile, especially during these challenging days we're all living in. Thanks for your gift of time and lovity. That's beautiful from Christine. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Rini Katz loves the idea of the boxes with all the fun stuff. Yeah, check it out. It's uh, Check it out. It's on our website. And uh, 
Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It got a review. They did a pre-review of it. Uh, uh, um, not quite sure who did the review. <laughs> right. She, but, also, uh, she also loves the name instead of In the Heights, In the House. In the yeah. House. I live if, in if, the house. If, so if, you know. yeah, <laughs> if you have to change it, right? Nothing like <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like life either, you know? That's so true. That's so true. So um, some, again, great comments. And Paul, too. Great show, Paul, Jim and Tamina. Yeah. Paul watching. And uh, they've been to uh, where Mary Tyler Moore is in Fairfield, Connecticut. Oak Lawn Cemetery is the name. That's where she's, that's her resting place is there. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm a TV trivia guy <laughs> uh, and radio. That's how I knew it was WDRC, the station you were WDRC. singing that wonderful song during rock night. <laughs> I've seen a dance all night. <laughs> oh a, a genuine, lovely and talented woman who wants to give back. Jim, thanks for bringing her on. Oh, of course, we had planned this a while ago and it was something that we just knew we wanted to do. And of course, our dear friend, mutual friend, Dan Goggin, bringing us together. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and he's amazing as well. Um, when you see comments like this, but also when you look at your career and all, everything that you've, you've done thus far, the wonderful opportunities that you've had um, and continue to have and, and to also mentor young students, others who are considering these roles and you know wanting to get into theater wanting to get into the arts wanting to get into performance wanting to give back um, that must be beautiful too to have these because I know the theater and you and, and Paul and everybody is they're very community centric community minded so um, it's great when you can give back to the community and especially to the young minds that are up and coming right well theater is is plays such a, an important role with, especially with youth, uh, not just for, for those who to go to choose a performing career, but, but the skills that they gain from being in a, an acting class or a theater class and, and the camaraderie and the teamwork and think, thinking out of the box and be able to work as a team and, and be able to stand in front of people and talk to them and, and look them in the eye. These are all skills that they, they gain from from being in theater, doing their drama courses in their high schools, and and uh, they're able to take on to real life when they going into a job interview, the difference it can make. Uh, along with once you get on the job, uh, you're interacting with people, and um, so those are skills that that you gain from taking classes and being part of theater and and, and going on stage, not just going to Broadway or, or a professional career. And that's kind of been our focus and our philosophy at Seven Angels. It's not about training for Broadway as much as training for life. And uh, so like our high school Halo Awards, we have high schools that are who have a, a lot of funding and a lot of support for their high school drama programs and schools that have no money, no support. Uh, and they all come together and they cheer each other on and uh, the talent that is there and the difference that it makes. So we have found that. So our HALOS program, it costs nothing to participate. Uh, we send judges all over the state to see their shows. And then they all come together at the beautiful Palace Theater. Uh, it's in that experience, they get to perform on that stage. And then they stand there and their peers are just cheering them on and it, it's it's moving. And, uh, and a lot of these kids, what percentage is gonna go on to actually pursue a career in the performing arts uh, as much as they're going to take these skills and use them in life. And it's beautiful to see. So that's kind of what our youth program, our educational programs are about. That's beautiful. What continues to give you the, the great blessing and joy to do the work that you do, Samina? Uh, family and friends, you know, uh, uh, and those little notes the thank you cards or or it, uh, someone tells me the difference that that it's made and that's that's kind of what it's all about and uh that's the that's the food for my soul absolutely do you I have, have a, a yeah. lot of children so this yeah. the theater is the theater is my my, my, my life 
Passion. You, um, do you have a uh, scrapbook, a career scrapbook? I have a, uh, I have so many three quarter inch tapes and VHS and DVDs of all my work, but also uh, photos galore from my work in you know, television, radio and everywhere else. And then letters, these letters you talk of that people have written. Somebody would hear me on the air or watch me and send a letter and say, I'm a shut in, I never get out but I watch you or I listen to you or whatever. Um, not even with this show, this is you know newer, but in my professional work on air, uh, I'll get these handwritten letters that will come in and, uh, or I'll see somebody in the store and uh, they'll be peeking and looking like, you know, tapping the husband. And then eventually they'll come over uh, and they'll say, oh, I've, you know, I, you've inspired me for years or you've, you've touched me or whatever it may be, but I never reached out. And now I'm here to tell you this. Those things are, you can't even script any of that. And I have all of those handwritten letters from, you know, colleagues, but from, you know, everyday people who are touched by what we love to do, something that comes with a lot of training, a lot of effort, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of all these things to do these careers that we're in. But at the same time, it gives us great joy and blessing. And it's what we love doing. It comes to us automatically. And then, you know, after years of doing it effortlessly, we make it look easier than it really, really is. There's always so much behind the scenes, as we know, to make everything look so smooth. And that's you know, that's when you know you've done it is when you make it look smooth and everybody thinks that they can, you know, just do it. Um, but when you get the feedback of people like that, um, as well as feedback from your peers, sometimes it's not always easy to get feedback from people who are doing what you do. And when you receive that, that's glorious as well, right? Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The letters that you get from people that you don't even know that, that had no idea that you touched them or that um, but that's priceless. It's just uh, that difference that it makes. And then to especially to have um, to have the respect of your peers and those that are that you just you you want to emulate or you you are you just so respect their their talent that when they when they support you it, it means a lot. It says a lot and that and Chris you, you know you never really arrive right you never arrive. You're always you're always right you never arrived you're done so you're always you're always striving and always uh, always learning and and I see so I have in the back I can't see, see I have on the back of my wall is that saying it says ancora imparo yeah so that means I am I am still learning in Italian, that's what it means. So that's been my motto. And don't be 60 years old and wonder what if. So that's right. what guided me. That's right, exactly, that's beautiful. Marsha Lyon of Massachusetts, is the name Samina a family name? I was supposed to be a boy um, and I was supposed to be named after my grandfather, Simone. And I wasn't a boy and it's, Simone really is a French name, and so we're Italian heritage. So my grandmother said that there was a little flower in the mountains of Italy and called Semina. And I have never found this flower. You've been but, searching, uh, yeah. But I did find that it is, I believe it's a common Pakistani name uh, because, oh, and I did find, I did find someone with the same name. When I was on the cruise ships, uh, and up, up to that point, I never saw anybody with the same name. You know, I never could carve my name in, in anything because nobody knew where to find me. So uh, I was on the cruise ship and we docked in, in uh, Guam. And Guam, there was a, a little cafe and we were down in the port. And I opened the Guam Pacific News. And of course, there was a, there was a, 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 a like a, what would you call them? A dance hall places, you know, where they had strip teasers and stuff like that. Um, so I opened up the paper and there was this uh, club that had three performers and that one was Samina 
And so just Samina, S-E-M-I-N-A. And so I finally found her and she was a, um, a, a, a dance hall stripper in Guam. So that's, <laughs> that's she's the only person I ever <laughs> that he made. And so then years later, I was in a taxi cab. You could not cab. have made that up. <laughs> I was in a taxi cab in, in Manhattan and with a bunch of friends. And so we were dropping each other off. And then, so I went, good night, good night, Samina, good night, Samina, good night, Samina. So then the cab driver uh, then asked me, he kept looking in the mirror and he kept saying, he said, what is your name? And I said, Samina. He said, but is that your name? So long story short, that's how I discovered that, I guess it's a common Pakistani name. Mm. It's uh, Does it mean I, something in Pakistani that you know of or? I, it has some, no, that I don't know. I, it goes back to seed or little seed. Um, yeah. I, I think the derivative of the word, but. Are you but Italian on both to, sides of the family? Yes. To both yes. sides, yeah, yeah. Both yeah. sides. So, According to my grandmother, it was a little flower in Italy, but I, I have yet to find it. You could also I pass. Think- you could pass for like Swedish or Scottish or Irish because of the complexion and just the look, the the lighter eyes too. Yeah. Yeah, we're, there's a lot of blue eyes in our family, and uh, it would be northern, uh, right? Northern, and probably northern. northern. Yeah, I like to lie sometimes. We say we're related to Yada and Dino. Oh, they're the chef. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah chef. And then Dino, the famous producer. Yes. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. Wow. <laughs> so you're loving life. Things are okay. I mean, you're, you're getting through everything that, uh, you know, you can and staying in touch with everybody. And uh, it's the 30th year. So that is a big milestone and not exactly the way you wanted to celebrate it, but that, that will happen, right? You know, in due time. Yes, we're planning. We're we're still planning. Yes, uh, we keep planning, uh, and we keep thinking. Okay, and as each as each new thing happens, which is unknown, about I, I think in theater generally, I think the feeling is that the vaccine is going to be what brings live theater back to any sort of normalcy. You're going to need to have right, right. Yeah, for any of the events and uh, yeah yeah i think i think and I'll, no one knows when that'll be in the meantime just keep creating and there's been a lot of innovation out there uh without a doubt look at yourself right here we are what you do, what you do when they have a vaccine people aren't going to let you stop no <laughs> yeah yeah no this uh this was something people wanted me to do for years to do this entertainment lifestyle talk show series and uh, because I was always so busy doing the actual work, television, radio, you know, stage stuff, I always said, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it this weekend. I'll do it this weekend. Now there was more time because the TV shoots, you know, I was supposed to be in Ireland and San Antonio and Florida and other places. And that because of the flights and no air travel, that sort of stopped. So I said, you know what, why don't I what do I do it? So we built the home studio and, you know, have the television lights from television and using my TV background, sort of formatted it, put it together as if I know it's on the internet. Um, but it is like, it's like a television show, uh, in terms of the way it's formatted and the way we sort of uh, present it similar to what you'd see on on TV. Um, Mm -hmm. and uh, people just seem to be responding to it and sharing and having watch parties and tagging and, and uh, it's growing and it's just a beautiful thing. So yeah, if we get beyond all of this with all fingers and toes crossed, we'll, we'll uh, more than likely keep doing it because it's, uh, it's an extension of what I do anyway. And uh, it's fun, I'm enjoying it. What I like about it is, um, you know, in doing all the other roles working in television and radio, it is under the auspices of like an umbrella Uh, you know, I'm hosting this show presented by this station or network or company, or this is the Jim Masters show live. So it's whatever reflects my personality, my 
my interests, tastes, and whoever, you know, the fun and the education, the information, uh, going deep with conversations. So it's a total, there isn't anybody saying, oh, well, stand here or do this or no, 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 let's, let's take that out of the script or no, 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 uh, next week we're going to do this. It's going to be just talk about that, which, you know, in other roles, that's usually what it's like. This is just all, I turn the lights on and, and we go at it live, <laughs> nightly. <laughs> It's cool. Yeah. And, and uh, there's nothing like it, right? There's, there's no, nothing like it. So you, you, it's a, it's something that you'll have with you the rest of your life now. So. Yes. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And it, you know, brought on wonderful folks like you as well, Samina. And, you know, um, Seven Angels Theater is actually where I met this fine gentleman and brilliant actor, Lou Diamond Phillips. Oh, Lou. Yeah. Remember that performance? Yeah. Um, that was really great. That show, and he, he not only was he in it, but didn't he, he write it and produce it and like do every aspect of it? Yeah, he did. He did everything. And he, uh, as a matter of fact, he's one of the actors who, who videoed. He's going to be on our uh, Keeping Life Theater Alive. Lou Diamond Phillips, yeah. With uh, with Dan, yeah. He wrote. As a matter of fact, he wrote a. Um, it's a children's book, and I That's believe right. why first. It's his wife who did the illustrations. So there, and it's going to be published this fall. And uh, it's a. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the title of it. Yeah. It has to do with a king and his kingdom and a queen, and uh, but it's sweet. It's very sweet. So he's he's on our tape, and he's a lovely man, um, and a great cook, great cook, and uh, really nice person. Just really, very very special person. So. It was a pleasure to have him at the theater and uh, have him in town. He embraced the town. He spent a lot of time at uh, Texas Roadhouse, and, and he would go into like the Nardelli's Deli, and and people would. And so I remember there was at one restaurant where he go. He went to Verdi's, and then he went to uh, there's a whole and people would not know, and they would say, well, "There's somebody that looks just like Lou Diamond Phillips. Can't possibly be, you know." And then one, I think it was at Texas Roadhouse, that this guy went out to his car and called his brother and said that uh, Lou Diamond, a guy who looked just like Lou Diamond Phillips, was there. And uh, uh, and so the, his brother said, "No, no, no." And so and he ended and ended up going back, and he won a very big bet with his brother. So he did well, but he didn't share his bet with Seven Angels. Can you imagine? Is that that can't be Lou Diamond Phillips eating no, a pastrami no, sandwich no. in the deli? Not a Rainbow <laughs> Drive in Waterbury. <laughs> exactly. Or a stop and shop. It cannot be picking up groceries so he can make dinner. Right? <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Yeah. So well, good good yeah. Uh, <laughs> I tell you. Yeah, and a good cook as well. Absolutely. So you mentioned Jada De Laurentiis, uh, the chef and cookbook author. Do you cook like uh, Ms. De Laurentiis? <laughs> I'm, I'm not a good cook. I, I mean, I What's like to specialty? cook. A specialty. Oh, I make a chicken vinegar. That is, Ooh, uh, what's that? I, uh, we talked a lot about food on this show. Oh, so you're going to make, like you're going to, we did a whole pop up show where I just popped up randomly. And it was supposed to be only like a 10 minute surprise. Hi, everybody. I'm here. It was like a Saturday afternoon, one o'clock in the afternoon. Normally we do the show at seven at night for Eastern. I just popped up. I, I gave 10 minutes notice. All these people, a lot of the regular loveties and all these people just flocked to it. And we did an hour and a half talking about meatloaf and mashed potatoes and all of our favorite foods. It was amazing. So food is big here. <laughs> oh yeah, I love food. I love food. But so, chicken vinegar? What's that? Chicken vinegar. Uh, my mother and my sister used to make it all the time, and it's a uh, you take uh, chicken breasts and chicken thighs, or you could do legs, you do anything really, and you saute the chicken, and you brown it, you brown it, and then um, in an olive oil. I always do, do some butter too. Um, oh, and also so, uh, some onion. You could do whatever you want in it, but onion and garlic, and then uh, I take. Uh, uh, depends on how much how much chicken you have, but then I take like a almost two cups of vinegar. Sometimes I'll mix red wine in with the vinegar, and then just a lot of oregano, Italian seasoning, uh, thyme. I just mix it all together, 
and a, and a good amount of oregano. And then after I've cooked the chicken a little bit, I pour that over it and I turn it down to simmer and I cover it and let, let it simmer till it's cooked through. Probably it's about less than an hour and uh, it's good. And then you put it, um, and then the sauce, you let the sauce uh, uh, boil down and uh, you put it over rice and it's good. <laughs> I like the way you said it. It's good. It's good. It's good. So my brother keeps trying to make it. He said it's not as good as when you make it. So I guess I have to make my brother something. It Sorry. never is, right? Sometimes yeah. somebody makes something and it always tastes better when they make it than when you make it sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, see, I, I told you they knew the Lovities. Oh, gosh, the Lovities really enjoy the food topics. <laughs> now they're starving. And Joan says, I love this. I feel like we're sitting in my living room visiting and we're not six feet apart. Nice night. That's beautiful. That's that's really, really beautiful. Um, What's your uh, favorite dish? What's you, know what else, you know what else she says? This is funny. Holy water. You boil the hell, you boil the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we use that. We use that in nonsense. So... <laughs> Danny stole that joke. <laughs> and he, Christine says, I believe these virtual shows will continue on months and years from now. Not as often. We'll probably keep going nightly. Um, I think of, even if I'm on a TV shoot or I'm somewhere, I think I'll do, you know, on location. You know, say, hey, I'm doing the show on location. I think we'll do that because we want to grow this and take this even larger. That's the game plan. Uh, is to not just do this as we're doing it here, but to even take it to uh, larger opportunities. So that's that's cool. We're looking for it. And Christine says that says it all. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, uh, anywhere you could take it anywhere, right? Look, Ireland, you got, you got Alaska, them. Alaska, yeah. all Alaska King Crab. So you got them going. Melted butter and salt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing like butter. Oh God, there's nothing like butter. She wants to know if you had a day your, to yourself, what would you like to do if it was just a Samina day? Oh, sit out in this in uh, a shaded spot and read a book. That's, I love to read. My father used to read a lot and he taught me the love of reading. So a lot of times theater gets so crazy, probably with yourself too, things get so crazy that you right. don't get time just to, just to read. Like I read so many scripts, but I like to just read yeah, it. it's not the same. You know, a lot of people they say that a lot of people are um, doing that. They're reading more. They're they're reading. They're doing a lot of these things that they didn't have time in life to do, and now there is some time. And people are you know taking up hobbies and crafts and different things that uh, you know getting in touch with friends and relatives and you know, been able to talk to in years because they've been so busy. There are some beautiful things that are coming out of this as much as it's, you know, horrifying in many ways, but there are some beautiful aspects to some of the things that have happened in terms of how we are with each other. Mm -hmm. I just read a, a, a wonderful uh, book, the, the Nightingale, which was a, a very successful book, but I never had a chance to read it. So I just finished that and it was beautiful. Mm. I think during the during the power outage with my little flashlight. <laughs> How long were you without power? Uh, about three and a half days. Uh, and no internet, nothing. No, no internet. I was trying to do internet back in California, so I would go down to the parking lot post office with my phone, and then, uh, um, and I had I had no generator. There was a lot of generators, like the neighborhoods sounded like a plane taking off because there were yeah. so many all the generators going yeah were going so uh so right when the power came back on i was kind of like at my end of i need power back <laughs> and so yeah did you lose power too did you lose power no too? very wow. lucky you didn't wow. very very lucky kept uh you know the wi-fi was acting a little funky and uh not the night of it. We're talking for folks watching. They're like, well, what are they talking about? Tropical storm Isaias that was more like a hurricane than tropical storm with the damage and what everything that it did. Um, 
but uh, we were very lucky. Just though the Wi-Fi was a little funky that night. Um, Wi-Fi is interesting. Even now I hear little voices, some weird noises in the background. The internet is a whole new crazy place. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. I, I had no Wi-Fi and mm. I'm not technically uh, savvy. Did you feel disconnected to the world? Because remember the, the days when we, there was no such thing as Wi-Fi, but now that we're so used to it, did you feel like something was missing? Well, I felt I didn't know what was going on too too much, so uh, that's and then I couldn't get my emails or anything. There was a part of it was like, oh yeah, I have an excuse as to I'm out of touch, right? So, but um, but I would go down to the like I said to the parking lot, the post office parking lot, and uh, I I was thought I could go to Panera, but they were out of power too, and uh, everybody was out of power and gas. You could get gas. You could right. not because yeah. the pumps are electronically operated. There's no gas, so I thought, okay. So, um, but that's how that's what I would do. And then I would come home and light some candles, put my flashlight on, and read. So, you couldn't get gas, but you can sure get agita. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, that's funny. Uh, real, real butter. Love to read too. Oh, real butter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it breezed by Florida and came up north. We all got uh, hit up north. Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. And uh, Christine says a book and the beach. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Samina, this was absolutely uh, delightful to have you here. And we toast you. We toast all of our guests. We toast oh, you. And... I have, I have a... Good. Everybody always has something. So let's toast. Slancha, chin chin, cheers, click, fantastic. We toast you. My water. That's it. You you've been doing a lot of voices tonight. You've earned that water. <laughs> so natural. George loved it. So much fun. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, does, uh, does she have anything wants to say as a goodbye on the show? Did she enjoy her time on the Gym Master Show Live? I had such a great time. I tell you, I tell you, you're something else, Jenny Doy. I just love you. I just love you. You are just full of lovity. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Goodbye, all you wonderful people out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. George says his thanks as well. Thank you, George. <laughs> and you know what? You know who's still with us at uh, almost four o'clock in the morning? Willie in, Will the, in, in the, the Netherlands. Oh, Willie. Thanks for the fun. Beautiful Holland. Oh, yes, absolutely. Cheers, H2O, Samina, and love Kathleen in New York City. Great show. Thanks, Jim and Samina. Absolutely. Toasts to Samina and Jim. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Love it. Linda in Florida enjoyed her time as well. And, and I certainly hope you enjoyed your time with me as much as I have with you, Samina. So much. It's been very special. Very special. I wasn't sure what to expect. So, okay. Yeah. Sometimes that's good, right? Cause you can have expectations and you're like, Oh, what? And, uh, you didn't have any expectation and you popped on and it was, it was really terrific. A lot of uh, great conversation and telling your story real quick before you go for people watching who may be saying, okay, what does an artistic director do at a theater? Of course I know, but how would you explain the work of an artistic director? Well, um, yeah. So the artistic director is the artistic vision of the, of the organization. And will choose the programming and uh, and guide and guide that vision and guide that mission of the organization, and then gets as hands on and as involved as possible. So at Seven Angels, I'm the artistic director, and I like to say I'm the artistic director and also the laundress. So, right. <laughs> so there's I mean there's nothing that you won't do to to make, to make sure to make it happen, and if it means that you have to help put painting or sweeping or cleaning or sewing. Uh, yeah, you know, the only thing I won't do is we have a catwalk, which we do our spotlight from. And I went up there once 
in 30 years and you won't get me up there again. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> thing I won't do. You have to climb out. and So you just do whatever it takes, right? And you, you looked, you looked down, right? I looked down and held on to that light. Yeah. No, I won't. so I will do anything and everything else. So an artistic director is the artistic vision for the theater and guides it. Um, and you've been doing that beautifully. Thank mm. you. You've been doing that beautifully. Wonderful comments here, of course. The theater itself. Thanks, Jim and Samina. And Jen is Zen. So much fun, good, magical. Good night and happy dreams from Joan. Good stuff. We got uh, quite a viewership uh, of uh, really enthusiastic, passionate, spirited people here, don't we? Thank you. Yes, thank you. It's been a pleasure and, and uh, memorable. So it's made me feel very good. Uh, thank you all. Thank my you. pleasure, my pleasure. And hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, see each other soon in person, yes. um, you know, at the theater and elsewhere. That'll be fantastic. It'll be great, great to break bread and pour a little wine and toast I'm for real. <laughs> the chicken and vinegar sounds good. Anytime you want to make that <laughs> now that we're hungry. <laughs> so thank you. It's been a pleasure. So They're saying good night too as well from Florida. Thank you both. Willie is still hanging in there in Holland. Class, hey, class, class. She's our viewer of the week too. All week we've been celebrating the viewer of the week. We pick one viewer who's loyal and she's on her 61st show, I think. And she takes naps in the day. Uh, sometimes she doesn't even take naps in the day. She stays up all night and it's 1 a.m. when it's 7 p.m. here. And she's up at 1 a.m. and sticks through the whole show. She could watch it in the archive at Gym Masters TV on YouTube. She wants to be here live for the energy. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, you know? It's very special, yeah. So, so, we, so we always show her the Dutch tulips. I love tulips. <laughs> <laughs> well, you take care. Thank you for being with us, Samina. Thanks for all the time, all the levity, telling us about some of the cool things that the theater has done. Of course, your brilliant career and being so authentic and, and open and um, and passionate. We really appreciate it. And uh, you're welcome back on the show anytime you like. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you in person, live. Live, 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 yeah. real live. That's it. Thank you. Buona notte. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you be well and stay safe, okay? And keep bye -bye. up the wonderful Thank work. You, everybody. Bye bye. Stay bye -bye. safe. Good night, Gracie. Good night, George. Good night. <laughs> Fantastic, huh? Fantastic. And everybody's still saying goodbye. Uh, Jennifer's saying, uh, Samina, thank you. Stay safe. Love you. Hearts from uh, Willie and Linda. Yes. And bye, Samina from Kathleen. We hope you enjoyed this episode. It was wonderful to have actress and artistic director from the Seven Angels Theater, which uh, really is a beautiful, beautiful place if you're ever uh, coming up to the New England area in the Northeastern United States, because we do have a global audience. Make sure you stop off. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful theater. And she's a brilliant actress and uh, so authentic, right? So so open and honest and authentic and real and that's refreshing and a lot of the guests we've had have been like that they they tell me that they find this an open and welcoming place for them to to be themselves and to emote and to share i had sarah brightman actually tell me that once when we were on public television i was interviewing her for a national pbs special uh, we were in the studio live and it was symphony in vienna and uh, they tasked me with interviewing her and we did live interviews with the uh, you know viewers watching nationally across the country for the symphony of vienna special and she was beautiful and brilliant but um it wasn't something she normally does you know she's very well trained classically trained and here was a live interview national where anything could happen and afterwards she sort of grabbed my hand and i remember her telling me whispering in the air that she felt so comfortable and she felt so uh, at ease that she expressed herself live on television with all the chaos of the cameras and phones ringing and everything, all the movement of the studio. She uh, expressed things she never thought she was going to be able to express and shared it beautifully. And that was wonderful. And uh, so I'm happy that we're able to sort of uh, 
duplicate that atmosphere here on this show, on the Gym Master Show Live. Christine says the setup on the Gym Master Show Live, offering viewer interactions, connection with the host guests throughout the show, leaves the viewer feeling as special as a special guest when the show comes to an end. What's better than that? Thank you very much, Christine. I really appreciate that. Beautifully said. Uh, good night, Mr. Lovety and all the Loveties. So you guys deemed me Mr. Lovety. That's uh, you guys created that, and it's just something that morphed from doing the show. And you never know, beautiful things like that happen. Jim, thank you so much. Samina is a lovely lady. I'm humbled and thankful to see and hear her. She really is, isn't she? And don't you love her laugh? It's very contagious. <laughs> and she's a brilliant Gracie among other things as well. And she was fun. You needed to smile. I know you did, Kathleen. We've been talking uh, and uh, I'm glad that you were able to smile tonight and hopefully uh, every night here on our show. Um, we, we thank her very much. Uh, wonderful guest, um, the lovely and talented uh, Smina De Laurentiis. And again, uh, an illustrious career accolades galore and awards, but that's not why she does it. She does it because she loves it and uh, created that fabulous place in her hometown. This is like a hometown story for her. And those stories are beautiful when you have things like that, right? And yes, she was on Growing Pains and LA Law, among other great shows. Nonsense, of course, the wonderful Dan Goggin and Nun Crackers too. And <laughs> I love this shot of her because she looks, I mentioned it to her, she looks so at home there at the theater, you know. It's just, uh, we thank our friends at the Seven Angels Theater as well for their love and support um, for this broadcast, just in terms of providing uh, the video and materials. We appreciate that. And Dan Goggin, too, who created Nonsense, <laughs> who was watching this evening uh, as well brilliant playwright and actor producer as well. So a fun night, a fun night. And uh, a reminder, if you'd like to know, again, some of the amazing people that are coming up tomorrow night, Saturday, an unbelievable show, music industry legends, Randy and Ann Dorman are going to be with us. They have worked with some of the biggest acts in the music industry from artist development to branding and marketing and production. And they have these beautiful recording studios. They've worked with Kenny Rogers and on and on and on. They're going to share all of this with us tomorrow. And Anne is a brilliant performer herself. That is Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. If you're watching this episode right now in the archives, then you can just scroll down and see the episode. Then on Sunday, Cuneo is going to be here famous for Under the Street Lamp, then uh, that wonderful group on public television many years and uh, have an opportunity to interview him. Sean Wiley, who also worked with Cuneo in Under the Street Lamp, he was a guest uh, just a couple of weeks ago. You can go back in the archives to see when Sean Wiley from Under the Street Lamp was on the Gym Master Show Live. Cuneo is a brilliant performer, singer, dancer, actor, solo career. He always sells out tours the country and beyond. He's going to be here on Sunday. Award-winning and legendary film director and producer and uh, screenplay writer and so much more, Lloyd Kaufman. Look at that shot, huh? You know it's going to be fun on Monday night with Lloyd Kaufman here. Tuesday, America's Got Talent sixth season winner. Yes, Landau. Eugene Murphy Jr. is going to be our special guest. He's also going to perform on the show live, which is really exciting. And then a little teaser. This is really cool. I don't know how he did that. I don't know how the cutout of him. That's so perfect, isn't it? That is uh, David Malik. He is a, uh, an award-winning and legendary uh, professional magician and entertainer. And he's going to be with us live. That's going to be an amazing episode. Have a good time. Lots of magic and more on Wednesday. And again, if you're watching this uh, in the archives, then just scroll down because probably by the time you're watching the archives, this episode with David might have already aired. But that'll be this Wednesday uh, coming up. And that's uh, going to be really cool. I believe that's the 19th of uh, August. So he's going to be with us. 
little magic. I disappear in them, huh? <laughs> so that's going to be a lot of fun. And that is on uh, Wednesday. We thank again, uh, fabulous Samina De Laurentiis. We thank you as well. And as you know, here on the show, we always say goodbye in uh, an, an interesting way. Usually we do this in the beginning, but this time we're going to do it as the close. We always do lights, camera, action. You know, we go Hollywood. We go big time here on the Gym Master Show Live. So we say lights, camera, action. We get ready to close the curtain. We hope you have a beautiful evening. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on the Gym Master Show Live, wherever you're watching from. I tell you, you certainly get your money's worth, right? If this was a movie or something else, this would have cost like 30 bucks a person for this amount of time and entertainment, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Relax, breathe, love one another, take care of one another as well. Even through the darkest times, always remember, we show this every night to relax. We picked this up uh, when we were on a family vacation in Newport, Rhode Island at one of those shops. Really cool. You can even see like a, it's like a 1920s, 1930s beach scene there in Newport. Really cool. So this became a part of our show as well. And we say relax and love one another and be kind to one another and as best you can uh, throughout uh, your day. Put a smile on somebody's face and maybe they'll put a smile on yours. Hopefully we do that here at the show. And we wrap with one more element. Whew. This is like a Hollywood production with all this, this production value here. I don't know. I'm going to have to start charging here. <laughs> here we go. I might be the host and the executive producer of this broadcast uh, of the same name, Jim Masters, the Jim Masters Show Live. But I think you guys, we do this every night. You guys are the stars. You and you and you and you and you and you. And I know Willie always looks for the blue star. So there it is. You guys are the stars. One other thing, a lot of these things have been taken off the walls in the house here. So if we rename the show, it'll be off the wall. <laughs> Everybody says goodnight, George and Jeannie, Jimmy and Silver, and your host here, Jim Masters. We're thanking you for your time this time till next time. I certainly hope you enjoyed your time with us wherever you're watching around the world. Spread the word, share the links love and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We would love that at Gym Masters TV. You can also find me on uh, Facebook. We also stream it there at Gym Masters TV on Facebook, uh, Instagram at Gym Masters TV, Twitter at Gym Masters TV. We're all over the place. Love having you here. It's always a joy. It's always a blessing. And um, let's see, Christine, you are a Hollywood production each and every night. Thank you very much. Good night. Have a great night. Thanks, Jim. See you tomorrow night right here. Magic. The lineup of guests you've already posted up this week for this weekend into next week looks incredible. We're working hard. You know, we're booked with guests all the way till the middle of October. Uh, as soon as they launched the show, the show didn't start with guests. It was me hosting the show, talking to viewers, doing different things. And then a lot of guests, friends of mine in the industry, and then other people who know people, they all recommend. So there's all these fantastic people that have been on the show, that are coming on the show. And then again, I do shows sometimes where it's just us. And you guys seem to love that too. Some of you even ask, are you going to do a show where it's just us? So we might do a pop-up maybe tomorrow on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. YouTube, Gym Masters TV, maybe tomorrow. If we do... I'll post it on the Facebook page at Jim Masters TV. Big hug to you as well. Thanks, Jim, for the wonderful show. I enjoy. Perfect. Watching in Holland. Thank you. You have a good night to you as well, Christine. This was a beautiful show. Thanks, Mr. Lovety. Thank you very much. Magic as well. I appreciate that. I love the viewer interaction. I've always been like that in my career. Stay safe. You as well. You as well. Can we have the night lights? You mean you want the, uh, you want to see again? You always ask for that. Uh, you want to see the set without the studio lights, right? All right. I don't do this for everybody, but I'll wrap the show that way. I think I did it once last week. So hang on. I got to go on the other side where the gang are, is, and we have to uh, do that. This is for you, Jennifer. You, you're not going to get this in a normal TV studio or anywhere else where they're just going to shut the lights off just for you. But I know you like to see the studio lighting here, right? All right, here we go. This is for you, Jennifer. We will be right back. Here it is.
There you go. I know you like it when it's like this, but now it's like we're at a campfire and I want s'mores because you like this lighting. Now you can actually see the lighting here at the studio, uh, the home studio. We built this, you know, in the house. So you can see all the different colors and all the different lighting. I'll get out of the way there. There we go. Take care of that. Now you can really see it. There we go. Now you can see the colors that you like to see, Jennifer. There you go. There's our set. Yes, that's a real guitar. So you happy, Jennifer? There you go. Not many hosts would do that. <laughs> so there is your set all lit up. Now you can actually see the colors uh, more vibrant than when the big studio lights are on. So happy to do that for you. And I think we'll wrap the show that way. It's very uh, Zen-like, right? Yes, very magical. You're very welcome. And in Holland, it's 3.53 a.m. You're amazing. There's something else, Willie. All right, gang, as my hair grows longer and longer, I haven't had a haircut since March. <laughs> Usually it's shorter, you know, like in that picture there in the logo. But hey, this is fun, kind of cold, summertime, let it blow in the wind, right? Hope I'll be awake for the pop-up show if it's tomorrow or Sunday, late morning, early afternoon. Thanks in advance, my pleasure. Glad you're enjoying the lights. Now you can see the colors more vibrant. So there you go, gang. We are gonna wrap up. I'll leave, should we leave the lights off? Everybody says, leave the lights off. You want the lights off, you know, the, the studio lights. And now you've got the backlighting. It's kind of cool, isn't it? You see actually all the different colors. One more shot here. Blues and greens and purples and gold and oranges and cool stuff. Only the best for you guys. All right. This is a long goodbye. My goodbyes are long. We're going to sign off. Love you guys. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on the Gym Masters Show Live means so much. Thanks, Jim. Jen is Zen. My gift to you with the lights as they are. So colorful. All right, gang, we're going to wrap up. We appreciate it. Again, we thank our friends at the Seven Angels Theater and uh, our wonderful guest, Samina De Laurentiis. She was wonderful having, it was wonderful having her as a guest on the show. Wonderful having you here as well. Good night, Mr. Lovity. Good night to all of you. We appreciate it, and I thank you very much uh, for being with us, whether you just joined us for the first time or you are an avid fan of the show. Keep telling everybody. Spread the word. Love that uh, YouTube channel if you can. We love that as well. And if you're here tomorrow, that's terrific. If you're not, you can see all the shows in the archives. They're all there. 14 weeks, almost 15 weeks of shows there for you exclusively on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Good night, everybody. You know what? I haven't even eaten dinner yet. We've been working so hard on all these shows. I've been going to bed like three, four in the morning. I have ziti. I have a whole ziti and meatball dinner that's on the other side of the house waiting to be reheated. <laughs> so I think we're going to have that now, especially after hearing about chicken and vinegar. I'm starving. See you tomorrow, gang. Love you. You take care. Have a good night. And thanks for watching. The Gym Master Show Live. Love you all. Good night.